How's it going, everybody? Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Mac, go Leafs, go! <gasps> aren't you from... Aren't you from... I forgot. Aren't you from, like, West Coast-ish? Alberta-ish? <laughs> That's sacrilege! But I appreciate it. Go Leafs, go! <laughs> well, how's it going? Uh, Helical, Atreides, De Deus Ex Machina, Cypher, Rage, Banes, some guy. A uh, Mike, welcome, welcome all. Welcome to a uh, new stream. Uh, let's, uh, more Canadian teams in the cup, the better. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. We'll talk about that soon. But first, some Alley Cat. First, nine lives in a dream, because that's all you can really hope for. Let's, uh, let's get started. Um... You might be noticing that there's a bit of a black bar situation. That's because I've increased the resolution of the game window. We are now living that 1024 life with Alley Cat. No longer are we on uh uh No longer are we on uh 960p. We're in 1024 now. It looks crisp. <laughs> it's cuz of you, Mike. Thanks to Fractal My Mike's advice on how to set a window properly. Uh, to help me uh, fix some things. Um, there you go. All right. All right. No joystick because unfortunately it's still not connected. None of it's really. Not everything is back to normal. Um, hang on. Was the music not playing? Damn. I guess I turned off the desktop audio by accident. <laughs> Whoopsie. Alicat difficulty. Nine lives in a dream. In three, two, one, go. Nine lives. Just gotta get that win. Okay, got that window. That's a good start. That's one. Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh. Hey. Oh, ho. Whoa, oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Maybe stuck. Okay, just set the broom along. Just get the broom busy. Oh, you stinking. Stinking. Oh, you. Why can't I make the die? Oh, boy. Gotcha. C doc akat jam C doc akat jam C doc akat jam. Jumi Yumi, thank you so much for the 17 month resub. As I get hit by the phone, <laughs> I'm gonna sneeze. Oh god, pause. Damn it! No! Oh! <laughs> no! Ah! Darn it! Six lives. It's fine. It's fine. You guys can hear me, right? Music's playing. Great. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Five lives. We're fine. We're fine. We're perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Ooh. Okay. There we go. No. Okay. Got. Okay. Okay. All right. I was about to distract the broom. Oh, that was close. Okay. Distract the broom. Oh, God damn it, dog. Get out of the way! Come on! Okay, got first stage. Okay, 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 good, good, good. First stage done. Okay, here we go. No! That second! Oh, that son of a bitch arrow! You stinking arrow. Here we go again. Huh, huh. 
Oh, come on! Come on! No! Oh, God. That was close. Ugh. No! What? Hua! Gotcha. All right, all right, all right. First stage done. I can't believe it. No! 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 Whoa! 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 No! I was so close! I was so close! I was so close! I was so close! Shit! 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 <laughs> no! I gotta do this all over again. Don't! Ah! Oh, got the cheese block again. No! Uh oh! Fuck! Ah! Oh, here we go. We're good. Bam! Oh! Like what? Shenanigans! I call shenanigans on this level. What is wrong with this level today? This level has been nothing but problems for me. Oh god, here we go again. What is up with this cheese block not working right? Oh, what is up with this? I can't freaking... Oh, it's supposed to go diagonal. What just keeps going limp? <laughs> Freddy, you can't be going limp. Uh-oh. There you go, that's better. Gotcha, that's two. Oh boy. Or not a window opening. Oh my god, the spider room. No! Oh god, I got it! Woo! Thought I made a mistake. Oh, I thought I screwed up there. Okay. so close the spider one was perfect no this is just not going well today terrible today it's been terrible terrible just absolutely terrible okay there was a second chance there is a second chance, but I've been given an extension of three li lives. Three lives. Three live extension. Let's do this. Come on. Do it for Chelnov. Do it for everyone. Do it for Freddy. Do it. Just do it. Two lives. Come on, you can do this. Come on, you can do this. Just focus, focus, focus. Focus, focus, focus. You got this. Focus. Oh boy. Well, no! <laughs> no! No! Damn it! Oh my goodness! Yo, Tony! Tony! Oh my goodness, Tony, you're back to streaming? <gasps> oh my goodness, welcome back, and thank you so much for the raid. Thank you so much for the raid, uh, Tony. Welcome, everybody, coming from uh, Tony's stream. I hope you had a wonderful time. 
of Dr. CDCS. Ah, yes, welcome back to the world of streaming there, Tony. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Playing some, uh, your second affiliate anniversary. Nice, nice. Quest of the Herb. Oh, Inherit the Orb. Earth Quest for the Orb, a game I have not played. Um, you had to get back for the special triple feature. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're back. Um, and, uh, yeah, also your birthday. Jesus. <laughs> it's your birthday? Mayday celebration affiliate anniversary? My God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, welcome, everybody. Welcome. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, welcome, Tony. Thank you again for the raid. Uh, Fracted my mic. Um, Kinnacles, good to see you. Uh, Monstro Monstro Me? <laughs> uh, or Monstro Me? Uh, Mac, 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 dial up some. Steetech Gaming, welcome, welcome. Uh, some guy in a hat. Uh, Chelnov. Um, dial up sound. Uh, David Alexander, some guy. Did I say some guy? Jumi Yumi, thank you again for the resubs. 31 months, thank you so much. Uh, Kirilos, um, or uh, Kirlai Kirlaus, uh, Deus Ex Machina, Helical, um, did I miss anybody else? Uh, Atreides, again, welcome. Uh, Rage. Um, yeah. You only woke up like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, welcome. Welcome. Today's uh, game was actually supposed to be played on Monday. I was actually going to play this tomorrow. Uh, but I figured, you know what? I kind of feel like playing it today. Uh, I was doing some testing and I was like, uh, I kind of feel like playing it today. Um, yeah. Yeah. I could call you Kira? All right. Welcome, welcome. Um, but yeah, so, um, it was cold and I wanted to stay in bed. <laughs> stay in bed. But today's game is uh, a point-and-click adventure, another point-and-click adventure from Legend. Um, I have played maybe two others? No, one. I've played one other point-and-click from Legend, um, I think. I can't remember. That was Companions of Xanth. Um, the, based on the novel from Piers Anthony. Piers Anthony, is that his name? Um, so this is another novel-based point-and-click from Legend. Uh, this is from an author called Frederick Pohl, and it's based off a series of novels called Gateway, a sci-fi series of novels, which I've never heard of. I've never heard of them. Um, it's a good choice, Dial-Up? Okay, well, or a hearty recommendation from Dial-Up. It's a good choice. <laughs> You don't think you've seen this game? I've heard of this game, I just never really experienced it. Oh my goodness! Tony! Gifting a sub to Kinnikos. Uh, Kinnikos, hope you enjoy the emotes, have some use for them during the month you have them. Tony, thank you so much for the support. That's gift sub number 95. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, I, I really don't know much about the series. All I know is this, uh, my last stream on Friday, which by the way was Battlefield Bad Company, um, uh, Bloody Cactus, uh, said that, uh, this, this point and click is great, but it's very wordy, so pl anticipate that. Just expect that. You're gonna be doing a lot of narration. So when I was doing the testing on it, it definitely seems like I'm going to lose my voice. Um, so uh, I was I was gonna do Steam Clean today. I was gonna do uh, I was gonna do uh, uh, Scorched Earth, but because of the nature of the game, <laughs> I think I might as well just get started with the game so that by the time my voice does go out, at least I've played some of the game. Um, Xanth is awesome. Never played it by myself, but you love my stream of it. Did you? <laughs> Xanth was fun when you were 12. Yes. I think there was a theme with that series. Um, hey there, Vork. Uh, the first uh, Gateway novel is excellent, huh? I, I ought to check it out. Um, Xanth is awesome. Never played it yourself. Oh, sorry. Uh, Cuning Sand, good to see you. This has some of the best 16 color graphics I've seen. So I will be using the... So, do you recommend the VG or the EG? I guess we can always alternate. You can see what they look like. I mean, so it doesn't hurt anyone by looking at it, by checking it out. Am I gonna use my French accent? Oh, it depends. It depends. It depends on how many different people have their voice. This is gonna get bad. <laughs> All I know is it's gonna get bad. Is it as wordy as Betrayal of Crondor? Astral, you're gonna have to see the interface. I don't know if you've seen the interface for this game, uh, but when you do, you'll probably get a good idea of just uh, what to expect. Um, 
uh, read it in a normal voice to strain it less, but then what's the fun? We won't have any Scottish, no French, no nothing. It'll just be a uh, normal voice. <laughs> It'll be very monotone. Um, the first novel is a good gateway into the series. Oh, good lord, Helico. I give that a 3.1. Um, <laughs> uh, ooh la la, yes, ooh la la. I'd love to see the EGA. I think it's high res in EGA. So uh, when I was testing, it did have an option for Super VGA, uh, but when I tried it, it went to black and white. So I don't know what was up with that. So I went to VGA and that seemed to work. I didn't bother checking out EGA. Um, say, say Magnifique. Excellent, excellent. Right, so um, what do you get in the box with Gateway? So this is the first release of Gateway that you're seeing the cover of. I don't have a copy of that. I do, however, got the, I guess it's a re-release, and that came on CD-ROM. Um, this one I got from Amazon. It was a seller who posted it in the Gateway 2 store listing on Amazon, and he wrote in the description, this is not for Gateway 2, this is for Gateway 1, I guess because there was no listing for Gateway. And um, they were selling it for a very reasonable price, like, I think it was $20. So I was like, ah, man, I can't say no to this. <laughs> So picked it up because I've seen people, I've seen, I've seen once listing for this game. People are asking, that one person is still trying to is like, no one, no one wants to pay that kind of money for that. Anyways, um, anyways, uh, here it is. This is the re-release package of Gateway, the animated interstellar adventure for Windows 95 and DOS CD-ROM. Um, here's the side of it. Um, this was, I guess, published by Mindscape. Um, and on the back, you have this, get rich quick or die. The gamble is the same way for every gateway prospector. Did someone say gambling? This is my kind of game. <laughs> you strap yourself into an alien starship whose des destination was programmed 500,000 years ago by a race called the Hichi. You may return with the mother lord of technology that will make you rich. More likely, you will, you will die. But when scientists discover the terrible secret behind the vanished Hichi civilization, you enter a desperate battle against an ancient race so ruthless and deadly that they are known simply as the Assassins. Um, so it's based on the Hugo and Nebula award-winning series. Um, there are some graph, there are some pictures of the game. Um, explore exotic new worlds. Uh, new learn the ropes on Gateway Station. Interact with alien races, search deep space for traces of the ancient civilization, the Hiji. And I don't want to read that because it says Final Confrontation. <laughs> um, stunning cinematic animated effects, 256 color VGA graphics. So if it's got animated stuff, we might lean towards the VGA. Um, it's got a unique screen, so you might actually see a light, a slight uh, indication there. Oh, there it is. There's a 256 graphics, it says it's animated. And here you can see it says, uh, uh, come on, focus, focus, focus on my, on my dry hand, because I didn't put any hand cream on. Um, come on, focus. Focus, you stupid camera. I don't think this camera can focus right. It's a bad camera. I think the further you go away, the more likely it focuses properly. So I don't know if you can read that. Unique screen design featuring... Um, Legends Next Generation Game System. Um, new screen formats. Pl pilot Interstellar Scout Ship, talk with characters, and operate high-tech equipment. Vastly superior graphics from Strategy Plus. Um, what are the system requirements? MS-DOS or Windows 95 CD-ROM drive at a 386. Yes, you could probably, you could play this on a 386. Uh... Requires 640k of RAM, a mouse, and VGA. It is Sound Blaster compatible. Adlib, it is compatible with the Roland MT32, which we'll be using. And a printer is required to output the manual. So, yes, if you saw the... You saw the box here. It says, free hint book enclosed. Um, that seems to be a going th running theme with Legend. Legend actually provided hint books with their games, which is nice. Um, but in this re-release... <clears throat> This re-release, they put 
everything on the CD. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> I, I love that future. I love that transition from paper manuals to on PDF Five on files. <laughs> back up, back up. Love it. Here's to fun old DOS adventure games. Shabba dabba no join on a boy. Zachary Hutton, thank you so much for the 70 bits. Uh, Shabba dabba yes. Um, so yeah, you got it. You got to. Um, the user instructions are included on the CD. By the way, here's the CD. Here's the CD for the game. One CD. By the way, pro tip. I don't know if you saw my 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 Twitter post that I made uh, maybe an hour ago. Uh, but if you're gonna pull a CD out, always use press here first, then gently press up. Um, yeah, don't uh, don't pull don't pull like this by without put, putting some uh, sort of pressure on the middle because there's a chance you might crack the CD completely, as happened to me uh, yesterday. <laughs> um, yeah, the jewel case has a crack on it. I mean, it's a jewel case. That's fine. I don't really have, it's not really a big deal. Um, I find it's easier if you lubricate the spindle with your tongue first. I'll take your word for that, uh, Mike. I'll take your word for it. Um, Dita has been streaming working on Doom Maps with a 286 machine. Making Doom Maps on a machine that can't run Doom at all. I was watching a stream yesterday. I was lurking. Um, what else do you get? You get a registration card from Mindscape. Um, three great reasons to register. Uh, strike it rich you get new product announcements discount offers quality customer service i wonder if they actually ever did that there's also a uh in user license agreement i think save this license for future reference yes this is the oh my gosh what's this c gate cd gateway use f1 for command menu tab to activate mouse oh that's a great look at that don't you love it when you come across someone's handwritten notes on how to get the game working properly? Look at that. Pro tips. Pro tips. Your Worms Armageddon CD broke? I was sad. Yeah, so the game that it broke on was uh, a game from published by LucasArts. Uh, it was called, it's called Arm and, Armed and Dangerous. It's a third person shooter. It's actually really funny. It's a really funny shooter. It's really good. Um, uh, so it's not expensive by any means. It's not an expensive game, but uh, that particular copy of the game I actually bought while I was on vacation in Singapore. Um, so it's the Asia Pacific region release, and it was it held it held some special memories for me because that was on that was a nice part. It was a nice vacation, um, and it was nice to explore some video game stores. Uh, this was the first time I went to an internet cafe. It was the first time I went like just a full day of computer shopping, of computer game shopping. It was a great day. Um, yeah, so I kind of, I kind of bummed out it broke. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, that's the box. That's all you get in the box. Well, this particular box. I also want to note that the seller for this box so packaged it really well. They, they. Just, they took out the CDs, they took out the, the stuff, they put that in a separate bubble wrap. They took this, they flattened it, put this in bubble wrap, and then they put it in a nice little plastic bag, and then they shipped it in a nice box. It was very, it was very considerate, the fact that uh, they shipped it. It was, it was, it was much cheaper than, uh, uh, it was, the shipping was not worth the price. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's the box. Hope you enjoyed looking at that quick unboxing. Singapore is exotic. You have to go wash your dishes in those past midnight. Uh, all right, Tony. Thanks again. Lurk away. Lurk away. Lurk away. All righty. What was it? Pretty dusty. Um, there you go. So that's what you get in the box. Uh, and yeah, like I said, um, I was inspired to uh, play the game because I had just picked up second box which we will look at further when i actually get to this game this is the sequel gateway to homeworld i wonder what that's about um but yeah i got this uh, last week so that's what i was like oh you know what kind of feel like playing uh the first one now so yeah we'll look at this box when we get to gateway two um free hymn book and close yeah we'll talk about that later <laughs> uh 
when we get to it. Uh, but yeah, Gateway 2. There it is. Um, but today we're going to look at Gateway 1. And I think the box... We'll put that right... There. <laughs> you can't see you can't see it anyways over my head, but whatever. It's right there. Um Wish all this disposable income collect this stuff because it's so cool. Well, it was 20 bucks, so it was definitely not I think I saw someone listed for 500 which no one was biting on. I think it's it's been there for years. I mean no one's gonna pay five hundred dollars for that, but you know. Um I'll pay twenty. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think I should probably get started with the game because I was going to do Steam Clean, I was going to do uh, Scorched Earth, but we should probably save my voice because it is a very verbose game. You'll see what I mean when we start the game. Uh, the interface is something I want to say, uh, I can't remember Xanth's interface. I feel like they're similar games. I feel like they had kind of similar interfaces but it's, I don't exactly remember. Um, but I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this game. I'm looking forward to seeing how it is. I hear that the, uh, the novelization is good. So we'll see how it is. Oh, I'm actually gonna reuse, um, we're actually gonna use uh, DOSBox staging. The same, the same um, DOSBox I use for Alley Cat because, uh, the uh, staging is well I set the configuration file to be a bit slower than um, usual because Alley Cat you know can run on a slower machine so I set it for that so I think uh, Gateway would run really well on this um, uh, what was that Xanth has a much bigger display and a smaller menu it does it does well it's not spoiler yet Let's let people see what, what they get this. Let's let people uh, embrace the interface <laughs> and see how it is. Uh, that Scorched Earth narration is rough. It is. It is. I mean, kablooey kablow. I also have to think these things up. It's not... You think, you think I come up with these things on the dime of what to say? Oh my goodness, one bite. It takes a, it takes a lot out of me. <laughs> uh, most games that I collect are on the cheaper end too. Most collectors can't afford to go spending hundreds or thousands on games. People are dreaming of those kinds of prices. Yes. Uh, speaking of, I have to return something. Um, I bought a game recently from the UK. The game was cheap. The shipping getting extortionate. How are ANZ people finding international shipping costs? I think ever since like Brexit became like a reality, especially for me, like prices, it's... Shipping used to be like five pounds, maybe 10 pounds of shipping, which when you convert it to Canadian dollars was a bit thing, but now it's like 40 pounds shipping. It's gotten just bad. It's bad. And yeah, it's just, I've really cut down what I've picked up from the UK, but I would like to pick up stuff from the UK. There's some UK releases of games I would like to pick up. Um, It can't be Brexit. It's USA too. Well, I mean, Brexit, I'm talking about buying stuff from the UK, shipping it to Canada. I don't know what you're talking about then, Zachary. Um, I could always have, no, it's okay. Kenny goes, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Um, I used to be able to import for what 10 to 20 Australian. Now it's 40 to 80 UK shipping. Yeah. UK shipping is, it's not great. It ain't great. All right. So, um, before we begin, let's go. Oh, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can, um, I don't think I can change. Well, I think I can. Nope. Is that edit? Oh no, it's type. I'm surprised it did, batty. Um, so if I change the VGA to EGA, will it load up in VGA? I mean EGA. Well, there's no edit. Um, I 
I changed the color. Can I get a solid color for the keyboard? A solid color. A solid color. Do you have anything in mind spe specifically, uh, some guy? I don't know <laughs> how to do that. Normally on. Nope. Go with the stream? No. Ah, there we go. Let's see. Um... I'm going to close my eyes. It's got the whole, I don't know if I can, uh, I can't, <laughs> I'm going to close. It's got, you know, the, this is the colored gamut, the whole spectrum of colors. I got my mouse cursor dragging along with it. I'm going to close my eyes and randomly stop somewhere. And there. Well, there we go. That's the color. It looks like red, cherry red. That's a very red color looking keyboard. Okay. Um, rose, I think it's rose. It looks like cherry to me. Anyways, um, so I'm gonna close this cause I was, I don't, you know what I'm gonna do? I will, Delete the drive and we'll install. Wait, will I? No, I'll edit it. Because <laughs> I don't know if I set the setting correctly on that. Um, Yeah, let me actually go to the directory itself and let me see if I can edit it. If I can just hack it that way. Yes, hack it. I said hack it. Um, If I can just edit the the file that way, that'll be f better. Um, DOS game gate. Uh, where is the gateway batch file? Okay. All right, so I changed the batch file to EGA. Let's see how this, let's see how this goes. All right, Conan, it's, it says it's set to, to EGA. To crush your enemies, <laughs> so they say it's, it says it's better. You. Let's see how and it is. Hear the lamentation of their women. Okay, so this is EGA. So I, if we leave, it looks like this. Well, I think there's, if I, I clicked here, I think it goes into a bar. This is 16 color. We're not there yet. Let's, let's let's go back. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Um, how do I quit? We'll come back to that. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, how do you quit? Yeah. So this interface take, took a while for me to get used to because I was testing it and I was like, how the hell does this thing work? Um, so uh, let me quit this out.
uh i know dial up i i i know how the i know how the interface basically works it's just some of it is a bit it's a way more in-depth interface than say sierra uh but let me just edit this again whoops nope don't want to load that up let's edit this let's go to vga super vga gets a little weird i don't know why it does that we'll do vga vga seems like a good medium or in between also i think it's a higher resolution and um that works for us. Uh, let's go back. Yeah, it's VGA. All right. It's very crisp, isn't it? Or so we'll um, let this play out. This is the introduction. Hopefully, please let me know if you can hear the game. The in the year 2077, the planet Venus was the new frontier for an overcrowded, exhausted, and nearly desperate Earth. Named for the Roman goddess of love and beauty, this hostile world was no paradise. Colonists and explorers had to adapt to average temperatures of 900 degrees, a surface pressure of 94 atmospheres, and a dense population of shoot! <laughs> the real reason for mankind's interest in Venus lay beneath the howling windstorms and acid clouds under the planet's jagged, parched, and hellishly hot surface, a buried secret that held seemingly infinite promise. Someone had come and gone before humans set foot on Venus. The planet was crisscrossed with tunnels carved out of the crust 500,000 years ago by a long vanished high technology civilization. The vanished aliens were a source of intense curiosity and hope for the 20 billion inhabitants of Earth. Wave after wave of explorers descended into the alien tunnels in search of advanced technology that might have been left behind by the so-called Hechi, or Hechi, or Hechi. Oh, good look at that guy. <laughs> Most of the artifacts discovered on Venus had no practical use and were little more than curiosity. It's, it's rig. It's rig before he shaved his head. The Hechi had cleaned out most of their t useful technology. Oh, so it seemed until the crotchety old tunnel explorer named Sylvester Macklin Hi, found a Andrew fully Retro functional. I see oh, using shit. The command that's part of my Twitch streams. Thank you for using it. If you'd like to hear it instead full, of reporting over to twitch.tv slash retro island. Is this the fine tooth uh, guys? You should have done that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you should have done that. Then you interrupted me. I got to restart this whole thing again. I shouldn't have said it was rig. <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> now I can't unsee that. All right, we'll, re we'll restart. We'll restart. We'll restart. We'll have to restart that. It's fine. It hasn't been ruined, Kira. It's fine. It's fine. Here's SVG, Conan, though. What is best in life? To crush your enemies, <laughs> see them driven before you. <laughs> and to hear the lamentation of their women. I like how I have to quit with do. All right. <laughs> this also gives me an opportunity to catch up to the text I missed. So it's a bit of a fast read. Let's try this again. Hi, okay. this is Andrew of Retro Island Gaming. I see that you're oh, using gosh. the command that's part of my Twitch streams. My thing is Thank broken. Thank you for using it. If you'd like to hear it in full, please head over to twitch.tv slash Retro Island Gaming for that and more. Thank you. Got to go to Rig's channel for that, Rig. I mean, Steetech. All right, Gateway. Frederick Pohl's Gateway. Here we go. In the year 2077, the planet Venus was the new frontier for an overcrowded, exhausted, and nearly desperate Earth. Named for the Roman goddess of love and beauty, this hostile world was no paradise. Colonists and explorers had to adapt to average temperatures of 900 degrees, a surface temperature of 94 atmospheres, and a dense planet-wide cloud cover made up of droplets of sulfuric acid. All right. 
The real reason for mankind's interest in Venus lay beneath the howling windstorms and the antacid clouds under the planet's jagged, parched, and hellishly hot surface, a buried secret that seemingly that held seemingly infinite promise. Someone had come and gone before humans had set foot on Venus. The planet was crisscrossed with tunnels carved out of the crust 500,000 years ago by a long vanished high technology civilization. The vanished aliens were a source of intense curiosity and hope for the 20 billion inhabitants of Earth. Wave after wave of explorers descended into the alien tunnels in search of advanced technology that might have been left by the so-called Hichi. Hichi. <laughs> Most of the artifacts discovered on Venus had pra no practical use and were little more than curiosities. The Hichi had cleaned out most of their useful technology, or so it seemed, until a crotchety old tunnel explorer named Sylvester Macklin found a fully functional Hichi spacecraft in a sealed off tunnel. Sylvester Macklin. Instead of reporting his find to the authorities, Macklin decided to try and figure out how to make the strange ship work. He climbed inside and began fiddling with the controls. Eventually, Macklin found the right button. Rocket engines ignited and the ancient ship climbed out of the boiling atmosphere of Venus on a plume of white fire. As soon as the ship was clear of the planet, the thruster stopped and the ship disappeared into what we now know is Tau space. Oh wow, it's going to the space station. When the ship returned to normal space, Macklin was delighted to find that he was still in Earth's solar system. He was even more delighted to find himself docking with an immense Hichi artifact, a huge space station circling the sun between Venus and Mercury. Macklin's ship parked itself inside a hangar filled with other ships of similar construction. Macklin left his ship and explored this, his sensational new find with a sense of awe and anticipation. The bad news was that Macklin couldn't resist the guidance system, reset the guidance system of his ship and get it to go anywhere. He was stuck without food or water. He wrestled desperately with controls as he became more and more hungry and thirsty. Towards the end, Macklin knew he wasn't going to go home. He directed his efforts to a new goal. Macklin decided that if he couldn't go back, he could at least signal his discovery to humanity. His death wouldn't be in vain. Macklin figured out how to detonate the fuel cells in his ship. The resulting flash was sighted by NASA and a mission was sent out to explore. The NASA, the NASA mission arrived at, Hichi, at the Hichi artifact and found hundreds of working faster than light Hichi starships, a priceless treasure trove that made the Hichi space station humanity's gateway to the stars. Thus, the alien starship parking garage earned its name Gateway. After a series of military confrontations and a narrowly averted war, the government of the major powers of Earth realized that Gateway was too valuable to be given to any one government. The government agreed to establish a multinational corporation called Gateway Enterprises, often referred to as the corporation, that would occupy Gateway and exploit the technology of the Hichi. The faster-than-light starships on Gateway are now used for a new form of high-tech prospecting. Human volunteers ride the alien ships in the hope that they will, vi will visit other worlds and bring back Hichi machines, tools, and other potentially useful items. Because human scientists still don't know how the ship's guidance systems work, the destinations of these prospecting missions are unknown. I will put that back. Thank you so much for the resub, whoever that was. Thank you, thank you. Oh, there it goes. It's the box art. For obvious reasons, these missions carry an extraordinary degree of risk. 15% of prospector missions don't come back and 80% return with little or nothing. The remaining 5% make the risks worthwhile and can turn ordinary people into instant millionaires. You won the local lottery on December 23rd, 2101. The prize was a one-way ticket to Gateway worth 238575 including a limited partnership in Gateway Enterprises, transportation to Gateway, 10 days worth of life support on Gateway itself, a class in Hichi ship handling, and an invitation to go on the first available mission after graduation. A week after you turn in your winning lottery ticket, you board an interplanetary ship traveling from Earth to Gateway. It is now Wednesday, May 17th, 21, 12, 2102, and you have been aboard Gateway for less than a day. You have been assigned living quarters and a proctor to show you around and get you settled in. Your first ship handling class starts later today. You are about to be become a Gateway prospector. Frederick Pulse Gateway!
There it is. There's the intro. Part one, Gateway Prospector. Yeehaw. And there's the game. All right. Let me turn that all back on. And let me see who that resub was. Yo, Sil, thank you so much for the 35 months. Thank you, thank you. I had to mute it while I was narrating, but thank you so much um, for the support. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. <laughs> All right. Um, I missed a lot of chat, too. Um, shirtless on Venus, very powerful imagery. Indeed. Sylvester Mac Mac Macklin. You're starting to think this story's all made up? What? So one thing I do know is that if you stay on this screen too long enough, uh, the music will stop. I don't know if that works with Sound Blaster, it probably keeps going, but on the MT32 it stops. Um, which is fine. I just leave and come back and I'll restart. The music is good though. I hope we got lots of water. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Okay. So, May 17th, 1200 hours. Your quarters. Your room is a Spartan cubicle furnished with a desk, a chair, a wall locker, and a fold-down bed. The only decorative touches are a sickly-looking plant sitting next to the desk and a lonely picture of Earth adorning the far wall. A PV comm set is set into the south wall. Above the PV is a vent. To the east is a door that leads outside. You notice that the desk has one drawer which is closed. On the desk, you see a debit card. The desk, the message light on the PV comm set is blinking. Okay, so you might be lo looking at this interface and going, what the what? Yes, so from what I can gather, so this is what I've learned so far. And once again, the same, same rules apply for any game I play. No hints, tips, spoilers in the chat. Um, I don't think I have that thing anymore. Did I make that? No, I didn't. I guess I didn't. But yeah, no hints, tips, or spoilers in the chat, please. Let me try and figure out games on my own. There are options in the chat, in the channel points. To kind of take a guess and uh, hint gate. But keep in mind that you should only really use those if I'm like, if I'm lost. Um, right. So um, this is what I've learned so far. So we got this little compass here. You can see my, my mouse. And the music stop. Yeah, music stop. Where's my mouse? Hello? Mouse? Oh, was it? Yeah. Nope. There's my mouse. Okay. Uh, this is the compass. You can actually click on it, and you can actually go different places. Uh, you can actually press F1. You can actually get the full button commands. Um, uh, it does... Yes, you're right, dial-up. It does... Uh, it does make things easier because you kind of already know what all the available commands are um the legend entertainment interface is great i guess we'll see <laughs> we'll see there's a lot of stuff in that interface though i didn't really take a good look at it um is it just me or did the stream freeze uh i don't think it did did it i got no drop frames but i'm not sure uh legend entertainment made eric the unready I haven't played that one. Uh, I like to turn off the sidebar and set them to verbose instead of brief. Verbose is good once you have to enter a location more than once. Oh, is it? All right. Well, let's take a look. Let's first introduce the interface to everyone before we start making changes to it. Um, so, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Um, uh, but, yeah. Uh, so, half, it gets rid of all of it. You just have the text. You can just type in stuff like a regular um, parser game. Um, but you can have the menu if you want. Text is text mode, and I don't know how to get out of that, so I'm just going to leave that there. Erase, I assume, just erase this stuff. I haven't looked at the manual, even though it's on the disk. I was like, I can't read this manual because it's not like the regular manual. I think, I think they just took a text file and just left it there. And I was like, oh, I'm not interested in that. Pitchery, I think you can turn it off. No, this is to show status. So you have a score of 1,600. That's your total score in the game. Uh, I've done zero turns. I have an account balance of 1,500. Um, you can turn back on the pitcher if you want. This is your inventory. So you have some boots, a white badge, and a blue coverall. Uh, you can look if you want to like use this as your description area. But I like the pitchers. I like having pictures. 
I mean, at least I hope. I hope we all like looking at pictures. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, Legend was also the maker of that Xanth game. Yeah, they were. Xanth was made by Legend. I actually have quite a few Legend games, and this is like the only, the second time I'm ever playing one. I think. Um, right. So. I think I want to get the music back. So we're going to go back out. We're going to ignore that. Let some music play. <laughs> ignore that. We'll come back to that. Good. We'll come back to that. Good. Here's the music. <laughs> All right. So here is f the first part. Um, the first column is like basically all your uh interactionable things you can do i guess would be the best thing to say uh the things you could do on your so the first half is basically like examine take drop open close look read uh you know commands it helps us group commands the rest of it is this basically i guess they decided you know what we don't want to leave left leave any guesswork for people trying to play our games we're gonna put every possible word you could probably use or the, the the system would have some kind of response to into the game and there's a lot there's a lot i'm actually quite impressed that oh what what's this music off oh shit i could just do that hang on <laughs> ah, I can do that every time. Music on. That's awesome. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, you could cry. I could cry. And I like how you... So, if you notice, it popped up then. So you can do... If you look at the bottom or the bright corner, where it actually has the stuff you're combining, you could be like, cry, then... Um... bite <laughs> then <laughs> buy games you let out a few heaving sobs now don't you feel better <laughs> I guess it only activate on the only really trigger the first thing like if it's not valid the rest of it um cry then bail you see that the stream title is not exaggerated yeah can i give a hint tip and a spoiler well since you gave all three sure i guess <laughs> things in the picture are clickable too oh okay again no hints tips or spoilers <laughs> Got fix, fold, follow, free, give, greet, hint, hint. Well, what? Oh shit! No. Wait. Oh. There is a hintway gatebook in your game package. If you've lost it, you can get hints by dialing or automated hint line. Oh. All right. Oh my god. Undress. Do it. You take off your boots. You take off your badge. You start to remove your coverall, but stop when you remember Gateway's prohibition against public nudity. Earth is currently going through one of his regressive social periods, and regrettably, the corporation enforces the taboo. <laughs> Alright. So I've taken off my shoes and badge. Wear boots. You put on the boots. Wear badge. Okay, I put on my badge and boots. Okay, okay. So I'm not naked. Well, I have everything back. But let's see what Bloody, uh, Bloody Cactus said you can actually click on stuff. So, on the far wall is a t page torn out of a magazine. And it says, look at picture. It is a full color reproduction of an oil painting depicting the Earth as seen from one of the high Pentagon defense satellites. The picture is taped to the wall. Oh, cool. What's this? Look at the wall locker. The wall locker is where you would stow your gear if you had any gear to stow. When you left Earth, you were traveling light. 
Look at the bed. The full down bed is what you use for sleeping in the climate controlled low G environment of Gateway. Look at the desk chair. The desk chair is a standard office model with the latest in ergonomic backrests. And what about this? Whoa! Taking the debit card first, that was a lot of text. Your score has gone up by two. Note, you can activate and deactivate score change notification using the notify command. Your Gateway Enterprises debit card is a small plastic card about the size and shape of a 20th century card. On the back of the card in small print is the following. Gateway Enterprises debit card code 938G-2982. By accepting or using this card, you agree to the rules and regulations that govern cash transactions on Gateway. Account status information can be accessed through your PV comm set. All amounts are in US dollars. Jesus Christ. That's a lot of text. The time is moving. Oh shit. Oh God, you can have fail states. If you take too much time, you won't be able to do things. <gasps> oh, I just realized that. Why did I pick this game? Can you right click? You can look at the drawer. What happens if you left click? Can you double click? Open the drawer. Oh. Oh, bloody cactus. This is actually a really good tip. <laughs> uh, you open the drawer and discover a book. The light, met the <laughs> okay, the light, that's always gonna be there until I address that. Can we look at it? Look in the drawer. The desk has a single drawer which is open. In the drawer you see a book. Can you double click the drawer? Close the drawer, okay. So it's not totally like, yeah, you can't, okay. So look, book. Look at under, okay, so yeah, the interface is also a bit more wordy, so you have to actually be a bit more descriptive. So you have to say, look at book. Taking the book first. Okay, so the game actually does that for, that's cool. Your score's gone up by three. Uh, the book is a hardcover volume entitled Everything You Know About the Heechee. All right. If I make mistakes, does the time keep passing? Um, hold on, hold on. <gasps> it does. Oh God, it takes a minute. <sighs> we have to be, okay, we're gonna have to restart this. I wasted time. Um, Soft locking is indeed a thing with legend games? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> I wanna look at the plant. There are many ways to look at this game. Oh, look at plants, sorry. The plant is a Draman fern. It is a descendant of a plant brought back, brought back from Euskadel 4 by a lucky prospector named Bellings who collected 250,000 for discovering Euskadel 4 and its nor earth normal atmosphere and flora. The leaves drop pitifully. Overall, the plant is not looking well. Oh, that sucks. Um, should we restart to streamline the timing? I don't know. I mean, this early on, I feel like... I feel like I, it says I have a day to get my things in order. So I will save as soon as we leave this room. We shouldn't, like spend too much time. I mean, closing the drawer, there you go. We looked at the plant, um, search plant. Yeah. Can we know if we are soft locked though? Or is it like magnetic scrolls where you can be soft locked and never know it? I honestly don't know, Astro Vortex. I have no idea. I don't remember getting soft locked in the first time I played Xanth, uh, I think I lucked out on it because, well, in, in the case of Xanth, you can have an option uh, and then it just game overs you. Uh, but I don't remember so getting soft locked in that. I don't remember. It's been a while since I played that game. Just click rub for 24 hours. <laughs> um, take, take photo. You don't need to use the photo in this game. If you make mistakes, does it take time? 
No, it doesn't. Okay. You can't, the picture is held to the wall with super tack tape. You can't remove the picture without ripping it. All right. Um, inventory. Does this take time? You're holding a book and a credit card. Uh, you're wearing a white badge, some boots, and a blue coverall. All right. So look at the PV concept. The PV comm set is a terminal linked into the onboard computer and communication systems. The console has a screen, a card slot, a message light, and a small keypad with 10 numbered keys. Um, so here, all, oh, I forgot to talk about this. These are all the, I guess, objects in, the, in this area you can interact with. So we can say... Uh, examine air duct. Examine the air duct. Set into the wall is a vent for the life support systems on Gateway that provides heating, ventilation, air conditioning. The vent is covered by a metal grate. Um, examine. Uh... Gotta get that music back. Um, I just found out this supports CGA. Nobody seems to have published screenshots of CGA though. Oh my goodness, really? I guess we can take a look at it. How hard could that be? How do you save? Save. Um, we'll just do start. Oh my goodness. Yo! Crunchy Snacker, thank you, for, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, welcome everybody. Coming from Crunchy Stream. Hope you had a wonderful time. Uh, I am Dr. CDCS. And I am playing Frederick Pohl's Gateway. Um, it's a point and click. Hey, welcome, Crunchy. Welcome, welcome. You're playing Onimusha. Eh? Nice game. Uh, I wish I, I want to replay that. So we're gonna try CGA. Let's check out CGA. Let's see what CGA looks like. That shouldn't take too long. Just gotta literally edit. I assume it's just whoops. Let's see what four color CGA looks like. But MT32 works. <laughs> Do you want to use a restore? Sure. There's no picture. It's all text. Ah, boo. <laughs> boo. All right. We're gonna get our old. Also, I wanna try Super VGA. That for some reason didn't work like I thought it would. This is Super VGA, and it goes to black and white. Wait, what? Did I, I must have typed it in wrong. I must have, see, I don't know what the, it might not be correct in the, uh, in the 
text file edit. It may not actually just be CG, SVGA. It might be something else. Did I not save it? I did. I did save it as SVGA. I just don't know what it is. That's fine. We'll just put it back to VGA. It's CG again. <laughs> oh, I forgot to turn on the timer. Yeah. Gateway. No. I'm going to have to reduce the size of that. Here we go. We're back. We're back to good old VGA. It's 12.35, May 17th. Um, so. Let's read the book. Read book. The book is a hardcover volume entitled Everything We Know About the Hechi. You open the book and look at the first page. It is blank. You quickly turn to the second page, the third page, and the fourth page. All are blank. You thumb through 196 more blank pages. On the last page is a note written in pencil. Forgive me the little joke. The corporation instructs proctors to give their new fish a standard issue data man personal information system. I give all my new initiates this book instead. If you take it to the corporation office on Level Dog, the receptionist there will give you the real thing. Regards, Thom Seldridge. I think we gotta write this down. We gotta start writing shit down again. Oh, welcome back. Welcome back, writing. Book. Um. Give book to corporate office at level dog okay I know SVGA works if you use the ET4000 DOS box and Vesta driver five more rows of text Do you want me to try that then? See how it looks in SVGA? I mean, this game does support it. SVGA and a VESA driver? So do I have to install a VESA driver? Or can I just, is there an option in uh, DOS boxes to like fake it? I guess. I guess there is, there should be, if I recall. Um, we'll quit. Whoops the hell uh oh uh oh 
Well, I had to. I had to kill DOS box. Would the pitchers be small? Oh, would the pitchers be small? I think they would be. Oh, I have to go here. Go here, go staging. Well, I just heard my dog bark. Hmm. Oh, is that mimicking an S3? Hmm. All right. So I guess it's, uh, the ET4000 would be better than the 3000. Um, in terms of VESA modes, compatible. Some games may experience flickering if you use all. So we'll just choose compatible and see how that goes. We'll save that. Does it tell me something here? What it's using? Initialized. It did. Okay, it did set initialize. So, oh wait, I gotta edit the batch file. Damn it. Uh, find the gateway batch file. Put the SVGA. And then do that. Type. Yep. Let's see. Oh shoot! I take. I did gate. I did gate, not gateway. Womp womp. This might be SVGA. <laughs> Those red lines really tell me the difference between VG and SVGA. <laughs> it might be. It might be. The loading block is smaller. Where's my mouse, dude? No, what the fuck? Why is my mouse not? Yeah, so this is SVGA. The mouse is not showing. Hmm. What's going on? The game was running so well. So the interface is much crisper. You can see the upper left corner, the it does look crisper. The picture is a bit smaller. Um Where's my mouse? I can see it and then it just has some issue. Is it the cycle count that suddenly doesn't... This was happening before. It's like it's disappeared. Oh no. Mouse emulator control keys. No. I 
I thought you were going crazy, but my mouse is over the video. I was thinking it's right there. <laughs> um, I don't know what happened. Suddenly the interface just, okay. Uh, I'm going to set it all back to the way it was. <laughs> all right. We're going to set it back to VGA. I don't know if that fit, messed up something. Um, I'm going to set it all back. Uh, set staging back to, uh, S3. I don't think there's anything else I did. Uh, and then I'm going to edit the gateway batch file to go back to VGA because that's weird. Um... What's a mouse? What's a game that used the mouse? We're not playing X. There's the mouse. Yeah, it works. Ignore that. <laughs> uh. There's the mouse. All right, we're not gonna mess it around with it anymore. Restore, yes. You know, I kind of like this. I kind of like the VGA. It has a bit more pop. Um, I like this. I see more real estate. Okay. Wait, my mouse cursor. Oh, there's my mouse cursor. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so, um, the. The, the, the thing that's been going like a constant thing is the the, the light has been blinking on the comm set. So look at comm set. Do. The PV comm set is a terminal linked to into the onboard computer and communication systems. The console has a screen, card slot, and a message light, and a small keypad with 10 numbered keys okay we've seen that already um you can turn off the menus if you don't like them yeah i don't know it's nice to have everything there get a kind of get a kind of get an idea of what's out in the environment what you can do although this is a lot i won't lie this is a lot the thing on the left is a lot Kiss. Oh my god, I can kiss. I can kill. <gasps> Alright, so use open, close, read, ask, put, yes, no, wait. Activate. Oops, that is not it. Erase. Activate. PV comp set. You insert your debit card into the slot. Nippon American Telephone and Telegraph Gateway Comnet. One, play new messages. Two, review stored messages. Three, gateway account status. Four, current events from Earth Comnet. Five, bulletin board and classified. Six, place a call. Place a call. And zeros in the session. Um, let's do. Oh, the music stopped. Uh, let's do a gateway account status. We have 1,500, all right. Review stored messages. Hello? Did it crash again? What is going on with this game? Nope, the mail stopped. No old messages available. I guess I'm not using the mouse. Something's happening with the mouse. I don't know what it is, but oh, there it is, it's working again. That's weird. What is going on? Is the cycle count too low? We'll put the cycle count to 29,000 cycles. Um, yeah, no new old messages. Play new messages. From Hector Gomez. Hector Gomez. Um, 
on May 17th, 2102, 10, 10 a.m. Attention, classes on Hichi ship handling are held daily at 1,500 hours. That is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, it says it right there. <laughs> in room T20. Take the drop shaft to corridor D4 to level Tanya. Bring the corporation issue data man that your proctor gave you. It's a valuable source of information. Please attend at your earliest convenience. Okay, so we saw the book. The book said that we read the book and it said if you want your data man, you gotta go to such and such level dog, get it from there. Fine. Um, so the classes we have to attend on Hichi ship handling are held daily at 1500 hours. So 300, 3 p.m. Um, classes. Um, we're going to go 3 p.m. Uh, room T20. Take the drop shaft to corridor D4. D4. In D4, Jesus Christ. In corridor D4 to level... Tanya. All right. Yo, Rhythm Song. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the chat. You're a big fan of this game, eh? Well, I look forward to seeing how this game is. People seem to say it's good. They seem to say it's good. So, uh, next. From Thom Seldridge. Uh, 11, uh, 1100 hours on the 15th of May, 2102. Hi, a new fish. I've been assigned to be your proctor. Custom dictates that I buy you a drink at the Blue Hell Bar. I'll see you there at 8 o'clock. Uh, I'll tell you who's who around here and introduce you to some folks. If you happen to miss me, don't worry. I'm there every night around the same time. Later, dude. All right. So, Thom Selridge. Uh, Blue Hell Bar. 8 o'clock. Okay. What's next? From Terry Nielsen, 1123 on the 17th of May. On behalf of Gateway Enterprises, I want to welcome you to Gateway Station. I am your designated corporation representative. You're one of 90 prospectors who fall under my responsibility as Deputy Director, Exploration Program Section. While we will most likely never meet, I am your official point of contact and any legal or contractual issues that may arise. I would like to wish you the best of luck on your prospecting missions. Regards, Terry Nielsen, DDEPSGE. All right. That's it. All right, main menu. Uh, review store messages. Okay, back. Gateway account, we've seen that. Bulletin board. Let's look at the current events, I mean. Um, so that's your first post, man? That's your first post? All right. Well, there you go. Uh, news item, Astra Media Services. Keller's Hill fire under control. Uh, the fire, oil fire, bleh, the oil. There is no fart sound effect. Oh, well. I guess there wasn't a demand for it until this very moment. Uh, the oil shale fires in the Keller's Hill sector of the Wyoming petrofood mines are within a day, a few days of being extinguished. Um... The underground inferno consumed several cubic miles of prime petro shale, causing losses in the billions of dollars. In my, the mines, extractor furnaces, and culture sheds. Man, I really need that music. Um, this is a classy place, is it? I mean, sure. <laughs> um, the mines, extractor furnaces, and culture sheds taken offline in the early days of the incident are now producing again, said Andrew Walker, a vice president of Petrofoods responsible for Keller's Hill Complex. I think the crisis is over. FDA and EPA officials at the site of the disaster had no comment. Wyoming Petrofood Mines. Petrofood Mines. Petrofood Mines. What does that mean? Are we eating fuel? <laughs> are we eating... Is that our food now? Is that our food? We mine for our food? Is that how it works? Oh boy. Oh boy, here's another press release. The L5 Space Lab suffers catastrophe. The NASA ESA L5 Space Lab at the third 
Langerhan point was severely damaged when it was struck by a resupply shuttle in a docking maneuver. NASA officials reported that the main cylinder of the L-5 lab su suffered complete atmosphere loss via explosive decompression after an intoxicated shuttle pilot collided with it and opened into, sp opened into space. Seven lab crewmen and other parts of the lab were injured in the incident. The shuttle was destroyed, although the pilot was rescued by lab personnel. The pilot was not harmed in the crash, but somehow got a broken jaw during the rescue efforts. He is now being transferred back to Earth for trial, having been accused of criminal negligence. <laughs> somehow got a broken jaw, eh? Hmm. Somehow. Whoops. Oh my god. New U.S. currency produces smiles in any town USA. The new U.S. currency that was issued in 2100 is a hit with consumers. The new in new dollars has now been dropped. And the result of the whole exercise has been to peg each U.S. dollar as an adjusted value that is the same as a dollar in 1995. Dropping three zeros off all the prices seems to have had a very positive psychological effect. Consumers everywhere are applauding. It's wonderful that I can buy a loaf of bread for $3 instead of 3000 <laughs> Said a shopper in Greenwood, North Carolina supermarket. This is just like real life now. Dollars just seem like funny money before. Many economists hailed the Treasury's decision to keep the name dollar for the unit of currency instead of the credit or NCU, new currency unit favored by some. $3,000 for bread. Nuclear blast kills 50,000 in Burkina Faso. A nuclear device is de detonated in Ouagadou, the capital of Burkina Faso, in the early morning hours of May 16, 2102. The resulting fireball consumed 50 city blocks and killed over 50,000 people. The Sankara Front claimed responsibility for the blast, the sixth of its kind in West Africa, during the last 20 years. Just two years ago, the Geneva-based war, Geneva-based UN Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Nonproliferation Center, I'm not saying that acronym, certified, what is this, UNNBCNPC, really? You certified the Sankara Front as a Class 4 insurgency, incapable of mounting any kind of NBC attack within the next five years. UNNB and BCNPC officials were unavailable for comment, although a spokesman said that an investigation will get underway as soon as possible. Oh my god, micro machines cripple synth oil refinery. Micro machines? What? Micro machines, really? But they're wonderful toys. Exxon reported that an epidemic of micro machines brought new operations at the Savannah synth oil refinery to a halt. Von Neumann micromachines built to speed chemical reactions. Um, I lost my... Mutated and escaped containment in a cracking tower. The tiny devices replicated themselves using metals and chemical residues, eating away at equipment and causing malfunctions all over the planet. Refinery workers reported symptoms such as itching skin, burning eyes, and loss of hearing at the, as the micromachines swarmed over all their bodies. The refinery was quickly evacuated once field supervisors understood what was happening. Plant workers were treated at a nearby hospital. The micromachines were eventually killed when Exxon bombarded the site with high-intensity microwave radiation, which erased the micromachine computer memories. Hmm. Nanomachines, son. <laughs> nice. Uh, news item, Gateway Corporation press release. Gateway Corporation held a press conference in New York to announce the latest exploration program discovery a heechi device unique in the history of gateway the strange machine looks like a toaster oven with no door and a reflective coating on the inside while scientists have not yet determined the exact function of the machine they are relatively sure that it is some kind of self-powered sensor or recording device the find was credited to bjorn holsten holstein a norwegian prospector visiting the var system five planets circling a faint 10th magnitude star in the belashev cluster was no problem he said a smiling Bjorn of his mission. Landed, took machine, took off. No problem. <laughs> the device is on temporary display at the Gateway Onboard Museum on Level Dog. Okay. There's a museum on Level Dog, eh? Toaster. Museum. And Level Dog. Holstein was awarded an advance on royalties of 2.5 million. Oh, God, is this important? Uh, Trans-Siberian maglev train crash, 3,000 miles. 25, okay, we'll just skip that. Rainforest park boundaries to be redrawn again. Okay, 27,000 uh, species, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Crazy Dave talks about the epic Tri-V production of Star Trek 
31 encounter on Blech. Star Trek 30 was to be the last interactive 3V movie featuring the cast of the ever popular syndicated show Star Trek The Last Generation. Hmm. It wasn't. Encounter on Blech is the sequel to the series that won't die. A five-hour feast for the senses, which continues to prove that the octogenarian cast can pull crowds into the theaters. The $520 million production needs to gross over $2 billion in order to break even. But Parapetra's international executives aren't worried. <laughs> okay. Um, commodity prices. Uh, shit's expensive. That's the... Virus damages Mormon databanks in the mountain. Uh, the Hodgendall virus, Mormon system, Salt Lake City, Utah. So over 100 million. All right. Gray plague outbreak claims new victims. Uh, Indian Ministry of Health, so-called Gray Plague, so Calcutta. All right. Uh, the seventh Iran-Iraq war. Okay. There's no known cure. Chernobyl site Riley finally reclaimed. Russian scientists and technicians removed the last traces of the melted nuclear reactor core at the site of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Huh. It was the worst, the world's worst nuclear power disaster until the Mirtha L. Mosley core explosion in France. The movie Money Figures are deadly accurate. Octogenarian cast, Patrick Stewart's 82 Picard is still a thing, so there you go. Well, it ended, so that's not happening anymore. Um prospectors class action against corporation a group of gateway prospectors represented by the famous trial lawyer douglas the shark trent has filed a suit against the gateway corporation for criminal mismanagement violation of charter and necessary cruelty stemming from the selective withholding of information related to the mysterious orion program is this something i need to be worried about orion program The corporation is withholding data that could save lives up there, said Trent in a press conference. They are committing the moral equivalent of murder by sending prospectors out without the benefit of Orion program data. Trent claims that the corporation hands out course codes with a high probability of success to an exclusive group of prospectors. Corporation attorneys will not comment on the suit other than to say that they are confident that the charges will be dismissed. Wait, what? Course codes. Huh. Hmm. Another earthquake in San Francisco. Oh boy. And that's it. All right, we're done. Bulletin board and classifieds. Bulletin, I talk to the Heechi. Prospectors, aren't you tired of relying on blind luck? I can help you pick course codes with a guarantee of big payoff through psychic communications with the Heechi. I can also put you in touch with your departed relatives and friends. Only 1,000 per session. Contact Tasha Wolf. Next bulletin. Uh, Better Days Company asks you to consider this. You may not come back. Think about it. Record memories, try vids, songs, poetry, stories. Become your family something. Give your family something to remember by if you shop out, ship out and become a statistic. Do the right thing. Contact Better Days Corp. Damn. Anyone from Syracuse, New York? I'm homesick. Let's talk about home and old times. Call me. The Hunan Boy Restaurant is the only onboard Chinese restaurant on Gateway. Uh, it's time for relaxing and unwinding with good food after a week of hard working. Call us now. It's a special week of reasonable prices. Egg roll, $15. Hunan chicken, $57. Mixed lo mein, $37. Soy noodles, $20. Mixed vegetables, $49. These are just sample. Call us now for more selection. Jesus, these prices are getting more like real life every day. <laughs> Corporation security. Somebody or bodies have been vandalizing the feeder systems. Okay, this is not funny. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, hand carved. Uh, okay. Anyone from Peru? So many strange faces. Want to meet someone? Looking train a gateway. Free catalog. All right. What do the green badges? Oh, Jesus Christ. Am I supposed to... This might be important. What do the green badges know that we don't? Why do they consistently score better than the rest of us? Why does the corporation discriminate us against with the Orion program? We demand representation on the corporation board. We demand access to Orion program data. Show us your support in stage of protest outside the Orion buildings. Daily at 900 hours, room 252, level Tanya. The corporation is trying to screw us over. Box 3942. Is this important? What are green badges? Uh, 
Um, show your support stage of protest. 900 hours. Uh, it's room T52. Level Tanya. Yo, Vavik, this how's it going? Next. Uh, from Essen, Germany. All right. Investor royalties. Okay. Uh, nope. Try evading. Nope. We received messages and memos from prospectors complaining that rats live in the ventilation system. All right. <laughs> there are no rats on Gateway, and that's it. Uh, did I miss anything? Anyone from Peru arriving in Lima? So many strange faces. I want to meet someone from home. Have a drink. Talk about things I don't know. Hand carved mahogany. Blah, blah, blah. Bisexual. Open-minded. Homesick. Want some company. No strings. Uh, level dog. Hydroponics. Somebody or someone has been vandalizing the feeder systems on the hydroponics lab. Is this important? I mean, this is on the station. I think... Is it, are these locations we should at least be aware of? Hydroponics level dog. Um. Okay, I think that's it. Place a call. Okay. Uh, end session. Yo, wasn't it 12 something? It's one thirty. All right, so I still have time. Was looking at each message one minute? It might have been. All right, so I think we've cleared this area. We still have to, we, we, we have time. We have time. So let's leave. And let's, let's go outside. You leave the barracks that is your temporary home. Walk along the narrow alley for a few moments and reach the center of Hichi Town. Hichi Town. Examine. Look around. That took two minutes. Oh, that's from walking. Uh, Hiji Town is a stupid spindle. Did I say stupid? <laughs> Hiji Town is a huge spindle shaped cave in the center of Gateway Station. Empty when the Hiji left, Hiji Town is now full of ugly corporation prefab buildings. The barracks that house your quarters are in a small alley to the west. To the northwest is the corporation administrative section building. The Blue Hell Ball are, and Casino, Casino, lie to the east. The corridors lead down, lead south and north. So we got a full compass there. We also got the northwest, which will lead to the corporation building. All right, so we need to head there. Yeah, so we'll head there. You find verbose mode her helpful. You're not you're the second person to say that. Hey there, River Shane. Good to see you. So we're gonna go northwest. Let's give our book in and let's get that item. That's north. Shit. I wasted two minutes or a minute. Well, I guess I can read this. Corridor D4. This is one of the main corridors that wind their way through the occupied portions of Gateway. These man-made hallways are nested inside the original tunnels that were dug by the Hichi when they created the station. Through the metal hash, hash, how's hash doing? Metal mesh walls of the angular passageway, you can see the outlines of ducts, pipes, and wires. A drop, a drop shaft leading up to level Babe and level Tanya is on the right side of the passageway. Who came up with these names? Dog, Babe, Tanya? Uh, the corridor ends in open entrances to the north and south. All right, let's go back. Oh. Oh, look at that picture. Gateway Enterprises, you can see people doing stuff in those windows. 
Are they dancing? I have no idea. All right, let's go northwest. Here we are. The corporation office lobby. Look at that place. Look at it. That's nice. The lobby of the corporation administration section, administrative section is one of the... Yo, this is sick. The lobby of the corporation administrative section is one of the only aesthetically pleasing places on Gateway. Well-placed lights and plants make the room seem bright and open, a welcome contrast to the claustrophobic grays and blues of the rest of the space station. Stairs climb up to the second floor and a glass door leads west. The metal door leading back into Heechee Town Square lies to the southeast. You see a desk on the reception and a receptionist here. On the desk you see a magazine and a vase. In the vase, you see a dead rose. All right, so. Doot, doot, doo doo. Um, let's see. Examine receptionist. Then I say, examine? The receptionist is a pretty young woman dressed in a spiffy business. I don't want to talk. <laughs> I just let the, let the music play. this song I want the other one no whatever it's fine the receptionist is a pretty young woman dressed in a spiffy business suit she is seated in front of a keyboard typing furiously and occasionally talking softly into an unobtrusive headset that is tucked under one ear okay so um talk to receptionist hmm did I type that wrong All right, uh, maybe I just give the book. Give book to receptionist. You hand the book to the receptionist. She looks at the first, pa few, first few pages, laughs and puts the book away in a drawer. From another drawer, she pulls out a small portable computer. This is the data man that you were supposed to get when you arrived, she says as she hands it to you. I think you'll find it a tad more interesting. Your score just went up by five. Boom. There we go. So we got five points. Um, look at data man. The data man personal information system is a small computer that stores huge amounts of, of text. And there it is. Information about gateway, ship handling notes, and corporation record. Station arrival date, I arrived there. Nothing. All right, ship handling notes. Holy crap. Let's try information on one. Okay, gateway station, how verbose is this gonna be? <laughs> gateway station is a large abandoned alien artifact circling the sun near the orbit of Venus. Gateway was built over half a million years ago by vanished aliens commonly known as the Heechi. The name Gateway comes from the 1,000 operational faster-than-light starships that were found aboard the derelict station. To humankind, which does not possess the secret of FTL travel, Gateway and its ships hold the pro bright promise of important new technology, interstellar exploration, and potentially even contact with new civilizations. Um, I don't think it can go through all of this, so let's just see. The Gateway Corporation. Um, ah, damn it. Gateway 
Gateway is unique in the history of humanity, and it was quickly realized that it was too valuable a resource to be given to any one government. A multinational corporation known as Gateway Enterprises, often referred to as the corporation, was established to occupy Gateway and exploit the technology of the Hichi. The corporation manages Gateway Station, administers an aggressive exploration program using the alien starships, and encourages commercial development of Hichi technology. The corporation is a vast enterprise employing tens of thousands of the world's best and brightest people. Revenues for the last fiscal year exceeded $3.7 trillion in adjusted dollars. Don't we already have trillion dollar companies? I forgot. <laughs> um, the interface is good. Huge amount of text, exactly what we need in this game. <laughs> um, a lot of people ask me, hey, Otter, if you could only play one game for the rest of your life, what would it be? And I think it's pretty obvious you play Freddy Pull Stargate. I mean, it's Frederick Pohl's gateway, but all right. Um, I hear Gateway Corp, and I think of the computers from the late 90s and 2000s. Actually, River Shen. Uh, my monitor right here is a gateway. It's still, it's my old 24-inch monitor that I've had since 2008. It still works, so I use it as a, I use it as a monitor. It's my vertical monitor. Um. All right. This is in new dollars. Oh, yes. No, it says adjusted dollars. Astro Vortex. Adjusted dollars. Not new dollars. All right. Gateway Corporation, Gateway Prospectors. The primary means of exploiting Gateway in the Heechi Starships. You know, I wouldn't mind this if the music was still playing. <laughs> I'm Part of me is thinking maybe I should play some MIDI music in the background. But then when the music plays it'll cut into it. Plus I have to use the, I want to use the MIDI from the SU-55 and that's connected to the MT-32. There's no way to separate it right now. Anyways, uh, the primary means of exploiting Gateway and the Heechee starships is through prospecting. Gateway prospectors are human volunteers who ride the alien ships in the hope that they will visit other worlds and bring back alien machines, tools, and other potentially useful items. Because the guidance systems of the Hichi starships are beyond the understanding of human scientists, the ships are sent to destinations that are unknown. The, the corporation rewards successful prospectors with royalties on their discoveries. For obvious reasons, prospecting missions carry an extraordinary degree of risk. 80% of missions return with little or nothing. 5% produce substantial returns for the prospectors involved, and 15% don't come back at all. All right. So... Since we know that this takes time, um, I don't want to waste too much of it. Uh, I will look at the four major powers. The four, four countries own all of the voting stock in Gateway Enterprises. Brazil, Japan, the United States, and the United States of Europe. Huh, it's called the United States of Europe now. Each of these countries provides capital to the corporation and reaps benefits from the exploitation of Hichi technology. The four major powers provide for the protection of Gateway through the Combined Sentinel Force, a multinational organization that is comprised of Brazilian, Japanese, U.S., and European military units. These units are stationed in and around corporation facilities in, on Earth and in space. Gateway's defenses include four military interplanetary cruisers, the USS Mayaguez, the RB Brasilia, the Avenging Sun, and the Cor... Correr <laughs> under joint command and detachments of military police and navy personnel from each of the four countries. Okay. Um, I guess I should look at Level Dog and Tanya. Level Dog is on the center of the station, both physically and administratively. On Level Dog, you'll find Hichi Town, the large cavern. Okay, I should write this down. Arby's Brazilian Saber. In the future, all fast food locations are Arby's. <laughs> As it should be. <laughs> All right. I just want to write this down. So level dog. You'll get Kichi Town. Um, oh, my God. Really? So Hichi Town is the large cavern that houses the corporation administration building. Okay. Barracks and blue. Okay. So uh, admin barracks. 
and blue hellbar. Okay. From Hiji Town, corridor C4 leads to Central Park. D6. Gateway Museum. Okay. A drop shaft in corridor D4 will take you up or down. All right, cool. So Demolition Man was wrong. It wasn't Taco Bell, but Arby's that won the corporate fast food wars. I'm okay with this timeline. I mean, ideally, it'd be everyone. Because I like, I like, I mean, for the most part, I do like the fast food I've eaten. I haven't had like one fast food experience that was so bad. I was like, I'm never eating there again. Um, I know some people have had that or some people are just like, oh, I'm just never going to eat fast food ever because it's not food, which is not true. It is food. You're just being picky. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, Tanya. Tanya, if you take the drop shift down to Tanya, you'll find yourself in quarter T6. So from level f D4. Hmm. I gotta, oh man, gotta make that trip to Arby's. I owe like six sandwiches right now for this next session. Six roast beef sandwiches with cheese sauce, please. I'm very hungry. <laughs> uh, corridor T6. So to the west will be the conference room. To the north, what? Oh, T5, Armory. To the south is quarter T7, Ship Hangers. In conference room T fifty two. You must be registered as flight clue crew and be in possession of a blue badge in order to get beyond the gate in the ship hangar entrance. This is actually kind of important. This stuff is pretty important. Generally, the only time you'll uh, need to go in the hangar is when you're about to embark on prospecting mission. Okay. Um, your proctor, VR terminal, fun, look at the proctor. Your proctor is the person who gave you this personal information system. He or she is a fellow prospector who has been assigned to take care of you for your first day on Gateway Station. He or she will explain life on the station and assist you in settling in. You can expect your proctor to treat you to a drink in the blue bar, in the blue bar, in the blue hell bar as a final step of your initiation. It is customary to buy him or her at least one drink as well. Who knows, you might become friends. Buy them a drink, okay. I have 1500 I mean, hopefully a drink doesn't cost $1,500. Um, your VR terminal. On your second floor, on the second floor of the corporation office block and level dog, you'll find the virtual to reality terminal. This system is a prototype that has been programmed with three experimental vir virtual realities. Two of these VRs are available for general use. Before you decide to use the VR terminal, you should note that virtual reality can be a very intense experience. Kinesthetic effects and input for all five of your senses will be fed directly into your brain. The virtual reality will seem as real to you as any other experience you've had in your life. Gateway Enterprises assumes no responsibility for mental or emotional trauma. <laughs> Guess we're trying that out. Um, all right. We don't need to look at the um, ship handling notes. We'll look at that when we need to. And that's it. It's 132. Um... Can we go up the stairs? The stairs up lead up to the second level. Walk upstairs. 
VR terminal. The room is small and cramped. Even so, it is partitioned into two distinct areas by a low plexus shield. On one hand of the shield is an uncomfortable looking couch that has a gold padded ring placed about neck level. Set into the side of the couch is a simple control board, which above is a sign and a small display screen. On the other side of the shield is a tiny desk and a chair. A frustrated looking technician sits in the, on the chair reading a newsletter. Stairs lead back down to the offices below. Um... So this tech looks up at you. So, so we got, so we got the book. We have classes at 3 p.m. So we got to be at room T20. So we got to head down from Hechi Town, take this down to level Tanya and go to T20. All right, so let's save. Oh my God. For a second there, I thought it was Mr. Radon. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh shoot. And I missed a bunch of dialogue because I was like, thinking about that. <laughs> um I didn't hear any of that, man. Why did the text, why did the text go, man? Why did the text go automatically? I got to reload that. Did I miss anything? I have to reload that. I didn't know it was going to start Where did you get that robot? Automatically. I built him. Like it? It's crap, son. Yo, Cosmic Void, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Thank you, thank you. You wanted to play this game. Is it good? Um, We barely touched it. It seems interesting. Plot itself seems really fun, like really good. But yeah, um, I just... <laughs> I just saw someone that reminded me of someone else, and I, and I missed a bunch of text, so I got to reload it. Um... But thank you again. And they're hydrated. Eh? Um. No. Erase. Restore. Oh, damn it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna take that long. All I gotta do is uh, use the card again. Okay, so play the messages. Um, I, I don't know if we'll we'll actually play through it. We'll we'll skip through the doll. I mean, we obviously read through this all. You know the thing about the, the 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 protest. That one I should probably keep. What is three nine four two? Is that a number? So we're gonna, whoops, we're gonna leave.
Okay. So... Oh, look at Rose. I didn't do that. A dead rose is wilted in black and is sitting in a vase. Take the rose? The receptionist swats her hand away and says, Hey, it may be dead, but it's still mine. Um, give book to receptionist. You hand your book? Okay, we got the, we got the score. Um, read data. Man. All right. Information about Gateway. We've already read it all, so I don't... Is that cheating? Maybe. All right. Now I'm going to save. This is where we left off. All right. I can just type save. Um, O2. Office. So let us walk up the... Is West mean we just go up? Whoops. No, it does not. So opening the boardroom door first. Boardroom. The conference room is one of the most elaborate media centers you've ever seen. Display screens, buttons, and equipment of unknown function surround an impressive conference table. The table is ringed with comfortable looking chairs. A glass door leads east. Um, each option will take a minute, right? <laughs> kind of. Chair. The conference table chair is looking by sit in chair. You're now in this on the seat. Twirl in chair. You don't need to use twirl. <laughs> okay, stand, stand up. You get off the seat. All right, we'll leave. Um. Okay. The tech looks up at you. Hey, you're a new fish, aren't you? Don't ask how I know. I can smell them a mile away. I've been waiting for someone to come and test out the new Beach VR from Nanotech. Neotech. I just installed it. I'll tell you what, new fish. I've read there's a bug in this new Beach VR, but since I haven't had time to find it... Since, but I haven't had time to find it. Since there's no one else handy, why don't you go in and bang on it for a while, while you, and see if you can figure it out? He gives you a critical look and ponders for a moment. I'll make you a deal. If you can find the bug and break the program, I'll give you something. Let me see. He pats his uniform. I've got it. How about my membership pin for the Pendroza Lounge? I never use it, and I'm shipping out soon anyway. Now, let me explain some rules about virtual reality, seeing as you're a layman and all. First of all, you've got to understand how to identify virtual reality when you're in one. It comes from practice and a sharp eye. Every VR has a purpose called the directive, and the program is usually pretty good about tracking the details important to that directive and keeping them consistent, but it's not so good about, the, about details that aren't important to the directive. So watch out for little things that change, colors, names, stuff like that. The simpler a VR, the more pronounced the changes. Um, okay, it's not so good about, okay. The tech continues, secondly, You've got to know the three ways to break out of a VR. The most straightforward is to halt the program that controls the reality. If the power is cut to the CPU or some backdoor shuts it down, poof, no more unreality. The second method is to do something that contradicts the VR's directive. If you can't stop a VR from achieving its purpose, it'll lock up. I remember a time, I remember one time I was in the early phys in an early phys ed VR. Its directive was to teach jogging techniques that would promote weight loss. But the designers created scenery so people wouldn't get bored. And one of the things they created was a store. I went in to buy a candy bar and the VR practically blew up my face. Poor design if you ask me. The final way to kill a VR is to overload it. You can create a situation that is beyond the computing power of the controlling program. The VR will break. The best example is to create an infinite progression. Natch. The program can't keep up computing something like x equals x times 2 forever. Eventually, x is going to get too dang big, and when it does, kapow. What is natch? Natch? Okay, that's about it. There's some other VRs loaded, but you should try beach first. By the way, if you can't figure out how to break the program, but you want to leave the VR anyway, you can always press this, the red escape button. He grins. Of course, that's the wimp's way out. Detective dives back behind the newsletter, suddenly oblivious to you. Alrighty. 
um, look around. The room is small and cramped. Even so, it is partitioned into two distinct areas by a low plexiglass, sh by a low plexi shield. On one of side of the shield is an uncomfortable looking couch that has a gold padded ring placed about neck level. Set into the side of the couch is a simple control board, above which is a sign and a small display screen. On the other side of the shield is a tiny desk and a chair. A frustrated looking technician sits on the chair, reading a newsletter. Stairs lead back down to the offices below. On the desk you see a VR manual. Uh, pick up manual. The text stops you and says, ain't you ever heard of private property? Well, I mean, how, what? Look at read manual. Oof. It's a slim, well-used manual. The cover reads Neotech's guide to virtual reality. You try to peek at what's inside, but the technician won't let you. Okay. Um, so they read paper in the news in the future. Yeah. Still works. It may not be paper. It could be some kind of synthetic material that is used to give to print that they print off and it feels like paper and then you just recycle it when you're done. Um, VR with bugs and you can't read up on it seems sus. Yeah, well, you know what's not sus? Getting the music back. Even though it's the same track, how come it's not the different music? Man, lame. Back to, damn. Change music. Music. Change. Damn it, music. Two. Music, please. <laughs> music, options. Nope. Oh. Uh. Uh, menu mode, half screen mode, text mode, status mode, map mode. What the hell is map mode? Oh. Menu mode. Half screen mode. Ah. So an easily recycled biogrid degradable medium that can be printed on, like paper. Yeah, but it's space, so it can't be just paper. Basically it has to be created out of materials there. Like a plastic. I don't know. How should I know? Hey this Wikagura. Um this is a point and click adventure called uh Gateway. It's based off a series of novels. Um I guess. Do I really want to spend time? It's 139. I gotta be there by three. Um He didn't say a time limit. Can I just leave? I can't. I can't leave. Leave. Oh you can leave. Alright, cool. Um What's wrong with the mouse? Sometimes the mouse cursor just stops moving. It's like very frustrating. Well, now I have to keep cycling out of the menu for it to work properly. All right, so let's go back out. So we're back in Hichi Town. So, um. No, I can tab to go to mouse mode, but you can see the mouse cursor on the compass, but it's not moving. I actually have to go to the, I have to like bring up the menu, like the actual help screen, cycle out, then it restarts itself. It's like it's getting stuck at times. 
Um, so I have to go to the classes start at 3 p.m. at T, room T20. So I got to go to corridor C4, go down to level Tanya. So corridor C20. This is corridor D4. A drop shaft leading to the level babe, uh, up to level babe, or down to level Tanya on the right side of the passageway. The corridor ends in open entrance to the north and south. So, examine drop shaft. The drop shaft is used to go between levels in the Logi environment of Gateway. The entryway you see here leads to a vertical shaft, like an ele elevator shaft, with moving cables that transport people up or down to other levels of Gateway. All right, so. Um, is use actually all the way down at the bottom? Undress. <laughs> throw up. <gasps> you can throw up. Tether. Strip. Struggle, swallow, steer, spin, sound off, sound on. Sound, what does sound do? Oh. It's not a toggle, okay, good. Sob. You let out a few heaving sobs, now don't you feel better? <laughs> Shuffle, show, shoot, shave, shake, scream. You bellow until your thro throat gets sore. Well, I'm getting there. Score. You've achieved a score of 10 out of 1,600 in 60 turns. You have an account balance of $1,500. Script on, script off. Transcript off. Oh, no. We need that. Ugh. Ugh. Uh oh. What does that mean? Enter transcript file name. I don't know what that. <laughs> uh oh. I don't know what that means. Um. Was it on by default? Oh, no, no. Change the keyboard color, eh? Well, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe it won't be anything. Scare. Scare myself. You frighten yourself and you get all jittery. I'm sorry, it just seemed very static. Why are you apologizing? Uh, that was requested. It was someone requested a solid color. So what do you want then, Sweet Kagura? Is there anything you want? Or should I just put whatever? Something pretty. Ugh. All right. Um, we'll do that. There we go. Um, all right. So up, down. Oh, there's up, down. All right. So we go down. You step into the drop shaft and are whisked down to level Tanya. We're in quarter T6. A drop shaft leading up to level dog is on the east side of the passageway. A corridor continues to the south and north. A door leads west. So, we have to go to T20. So, we have to go to the west. Here we are. This is one of the common access conference rooms that are used for construction classes, briefings, and other corporation business. Inside the room is a conference table, chairs, and a view screen. The table and chairs look like are look well used and are made of institution green thermoplastic. The rest of the room lacks any personality at all. The walls and ceiling are made of dull green 
Millica tiles. The only other feature is a vent in the ceiling over the conference table. A door leads east. So that's where we're supposed to be, but I think we're early. Because no one's here. Look around. Okay, so that wasted a turn. Um, oh, no, no, there's more. The only other feature is a vent. Oh, no, no, that's everything. Honestly, I can't tell if I'm... I can't tell if my character is sitting at a table looking at empty chairs or we're in this large room with these pillars <laughs> that look like we're looking at a very fall. I guess we're looking at tables that are empty or chairs that are empty. Yes, we'll use institution green thermoplastic. Okay. Um, the only other look under table because you can look under the table. You crawl under the table and look around, banging your head in the process and seeing nothing of interest. Nice. <laughs> um, we can go out. A drop shaft leading to level dog. Okay, so we got time, which makes me think that maybe I should reload and try that VR stuff and see how that goes. There's nothing else to do. I could explore, but yeah, I guess I can explore. What's around here? If we go north from corridor T6, we should go to the, we will end up in the armory. Looks like an armory. The corridor ends in a bulkhead to the north. An armored door to the west is guarded by a bored looking European space military policeman who is staring at nothing. The corridor continues to the south. You see a guard here. Examine the guard. The guard is dressed in the uniform of a European Space Navy MP, which is not surprising because he is a European Space Navy MP. He looks very bored. <laughs> Talk to guard. Piss off! The MP snarls at you. Well, that's a fine howdy-do. Yo, Nukem, how you doing? West? Why does he go west? Ooh. This is where the onboard military force is. That is the music not on? Kind of... This is where the onboard military forces that protect gateways store their weapons. Seal cases running the length of the room hide an arsenal of American, European, Brazilian, and Japanese laser and projectile weaponry. Red and yellow signs outline procedures for handling and storing guns, grenades, lasers, rocket launchers, and other lethal devices. Above a low storage cabinet, you see a vent cover. You see a storage cabinet here. On the storage cabinet, you see a gun. Hmm. A gun? A gun. A gun. There we go. Kiss the guard. That's a little inappropriate, don't you think, Pi? Not without his permission. Kiss guard. That does it, mate. The previously bored MP takes a sudden interest in making sure that you assume a horizontal position on the deck plates as quickly as possible. He wrestles you down, putting an elbow into your ribs, a fist into your solar plexus, and a foot into your gut. When you're flat on your back, he puts his face an inch from yours. I enjoyed that, Yank. Now piss off. He resumes his vigil outside the armory and slowly get back to your feet. Huh. That's what happens. All right. We're not dead, though, so that's good. Look at gun. The gun is a sleek, lethal-looking weapon made of gray metal and plastic. From your childhood days of endless trivy watching, you recognize it as an HK and P-15 Mark II energy weapon, a standard European military sidearm made during the late 21st century. Pick up gun. You take the gun from the service of the cabinet. Examine gun. We have a gun. <laughs> am I gonna get am I gonna get arrested? Uh look at storage. Well whoops, sorry, 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 sorry. Read signs. 
You read a number of instructive paragraphs on how to disassemble, clean, and store different types of weaponry. Yo, Joey's, what did you just walk into? You walked into, uh, you know, testing the testing to see how this uh, game handles things. <laughs> We're just experimenting. Um, armory. The small the small storage cabin is a dull green metal case about four feet high. A metal grate is almost directly overhead. We can't open it. Look at the storage units. The room is filled with weapon storage units. They are secure metal cases that run from floor to ceiling, except for one small storage cabin near the entrance. You can feel the brooding presence of massed weapons inside the lock cases. Um, getting the gun might be like a game over. I have a feeling that the gun is like uh, a trap and either we leave the room or something's going to happen. And we're going to get in deep, deep doo-doo for having this gun on us. But I'm willing to see what happens. <laughs> Picked up gun. Okay. You see... The guard says, sorry, only authorized person are allowed to remove weapons from the armory. He takes the gun and returns it to the armory. Oh, if that's all that happens, that's, that's actually, I got off scot-free on that. <laughs> okay, so I didn't get shot for holding a gun. All right, cool. Um, let's go south. Um, quarter T7, debit card, hangar entrance, me, pipe work. Examine pipe work. The corridor structure is made up of metal mesh. Uh, through the mesh, you can see clusters of pipes, ducts, and wires. These are the arteries for air, water, power, and data that make gateway habitable for human beings. Where is the music, for God's sakes? Thank you. Why is it music? Room T52. Oops. Look or examine. Uh... Oh, man. You see nothing special about room T52. About the room T52, all right. Examine T52 door. So that's a conference room as well. So let's go south. Whoa. The corridor opens up into a large room dominated by a thermoplastic counter and a closed gate. The gate bars access to the busy sh ship hangars on level Tanya. Behind the gate to the south, you see the, the landing gear for one of the ships in the distance. The hangar spaces seem to hum with activity. You see an agent and a sentry here. I don't think we're supposed to be here yet, so we're gonna leave. The guard steps in front of you and says, Authorized flight crew only. Show a blue or green badge to the current agent if you want to go on a mission, otherwise you're out of luck. Whoops, I meant to go north. So then it's two o'clock. I think I'm going to reload, try and do this VR stuff and see what happens. Um, God. Is that two? Why won't you give me that song? That song was so good. Man, do I still have the book? No, I have the data, man. All right. All right. Once again, Mr. Radon. <laughs> okay, so there's the uh, there's the thing. Um, look at the power button. The button is clear, red, and clearly marked power. Look at the couch. The couch is molded from uncomfortable green plast steel. On the side of it is a control board and there is a padded metal collar at about neck level. You sit on the couch. All right, we're now on the couch. What is that? Look at the display screen. A label above the tiny screen reads, Deep Psych Analysis Results. The screen itself is dark. Oh, what? Neotech Virtual Realities. Beach, number one is Beach Fantasy, the one he asked us to, t to test out. 
Number two, surface psych reinforcement, a scientifically proven program for stress relief. And then three is deep psych analysis, direct confrontation utilization of inner phobias, used only by prescription, past required. I feel like we have to use this at some point. All right. Um, alcohol is served. It's a standard keyboard with none of the extras. Examine membership pin? What's that? It's a gaud gaudy golden pin with Pedroza Club engraved on it. Right, he said he'll give us that if we break his break the VR system. Um, so what do I have? Power button. We have the power button. We have the VR manual. We have the uniform, technician, switch. Examine switch. The switch has three settings. The upper one reads beach, the middle one reads surface, and the lower reads deep psych. It is currently set to beach. That's where it's supposed to be. Okay. Why did the mouse stop? See, the mouse stopped again. Yeah, now it's working. I have to like keep exiting out. I don't know why that's happening. If I if my if the Pentium was working, I would have installed it on there. Um all right, so press the switch. You move the switch from beach to surface psych. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Nope. Okay, we're back to beach. Press button. You press the button, the couch starts to hum with power and the collar begins to glow with dark blue. After a second, however, the collar ceases to glow and the couch powers down. All right, so I guess I have to equip the collar. Examine collar. The collar is set into the couch at approximately neck level. It opens and closes with a cl spring clasp. Uh, wear collar. You snap open the collar's spring clasp and settle into it. The pads around your neck keep you from moving your head, and the collar itself seems a little tight. All in all, a very unpleasant experience. Dog in space. Maybe dog wants to go to space. Yeah. That's my dog. More likely someone's eating something, and she wants it. Um, okay. Press button. You press the button. The couch st starts to hum with power and the collar begins to glow with dark blue. Everything around you fades into to milky white. Then a pitcher begins to form. Grains of yellow fall from nowhere and spread out until they form a sandy beach. Blues appear in ragged streaks above and then they melt together to become an azure sky. An ocean appears and then an outdoor bar. You look down and discover you're wearing swimming trunks and lounging on a beach chair. A cheerful bartender pops into existence. He puts a drink on the bar and looks at you expectantly. <gasps> it's music. Hello, friend. Welcome to the virtual beast. Beast? <laughs> Welcome to the virtual beach. I'm Sam, your bartender, and I exist solely to serve you. This reality is intended for relaxation, so feel free to lounge around. And if you're, a mood to, if you're in a mood, partake of my specialty drink. I'll leave one here on the bar for you. He says to break it, so punch bartender. Getting out of the beach chair first, you leap for the bartender, but the last second he not dodges out of the way. You look like you need a drink, buddy. Fight bartender. Ah, <laughs> uh, you can't fight him. Throw drink in bartender's face. There doesn't seem to be a bartender's face here. <laughs> um, these are extremely good DOS graphics. Yeah. Listen to that MT32 going. Um, at least in this game, hey, everyone, 
I get I get that you're kind of curious what to type in, but it's like written in the chat. No hints, tips, or spoilers, please. Um, what's the MT32? The Roland MT32. It's a, it's a music synth device. You can you get you can get it through emulation through months, but I have a real one, so we're listening to that right now. Um, I don't have a picture of it. I also don't have a camera of it. Well, I do. Ugh, I don't think the camera's gonna reach. There it is. It's the it's it's that one. It's playing the music right now. I will try your, your examples. Kiss the bartender. Throw me throw it at the bartender. Throw drink at bartender. Taking the frosted glass. The bartender adroitly snatches the glass out of the air. The bartender thankfully accepts the proffered drink. Let me get that for you. Let me get that one for you, too. He waves the drink by the scanner, and another frosted glass fills up with foamy liquid. And another foamy frosted glass filled with foamy liquid appears on the bar. Heads up! He raises the glass in salute and downs in one swing. Man, that was great. Totally unreal. He thinks about he thinks about his statement for a second and says with a smile, Yeah, I guess that's about right. He throws the empty glass behind the bar. Uh... Uh, but it hits the counter instead and falls to the ground. Whoa, he says, grinning. I must be making those drinks stronger than I thought. He picks up the glass and tosses it out of sight behind the bar. Your score has just gone up by five. The bartender takes off his sandal and shakes the sound out of it. Oh, uh. So this is why I say to people, please don't type in chat things, because they could actually be solutions. So... Please, in the future, again, let's not do this. <laughs> let, let, let's, let me try and figure these things out. No spoilers, please. No tips, no hints, no nothing. So let's try the second one. <laughs> this bartender. The bartender just shakes his head. We get, all, we get all kinds in here. Okay. Look at bartender. The bartender starts f looks fairly laid back. He's wearing a short-sleeved Hawaiian shirt. <gasps> Stop saying Hawaii in here. Cut off shorts and sandals. He has about a day's stubble growth and a wild wind-blown mane of hair. He holds a green rag, which he passes over the bar's surface occasionally. His manner is easily and friendly, and if you find yourself relaxing, you find yourself relaxing around him. All right, so throw. Whoops. Look at drink. Drops of moisture run down the frosted sides of the glass. It is filled with a creamy, delicious-looking banana dakiri. The bartender straightens his shirt and looks over you, perhaps awaiting an order. Talk to bartender. The bartender grins. Hey, I just work here. If you like a refill, then just give me your empties. Uh, look at sand. You see nothing special about the beach. What's around here? Undress. You work at the swimsuits not for a while, but finally give up. You decide to leave the suit on, so we can't get naked. Take off shirt. The bartender will really appreciate someone trying to undress him. Oh, <laughs> it's his shirt. Look at shirt. This, the shirt is light and airy, but it has the loudest Hawaiian pattern you've ever seen. Suddenly you notice that your swimsuit has changed color. The co bartender runs his rag through the bamboo trim, whistling merrily. My swimsuit changed color? Is that important?
It almost hurts to look at this blinding neon, uh, the blinding neon colors of this incredibly stylish swimsuit. The suit is dominated by a bright green with blue and red trim. Okay. The bartender is wearing a pair of sandals made of soft leather. There is a little air sack on the back of each one that, and a tag that reads Birkenstock pumps. The bartender eyes your glass, trying to anticipate when you want another. Look at starfish. You don't need to use starfish. Who will load the stem swimsuit? <laughs> The music is playing, right? It's not stopping. That's nice for once. Um, look at the Kiri. The frothy liquid blends a multitude of delicious ingredients. It looks incredible. You can't wait to taste it. Throw Daikiri at bartender. Pick up Daikiri. You take the frosted glass from the beach bar. The bartender leans against the counter and watches the sea sign. Throw Daikiri at bartender. The, bar the Daikiri splashes over the bartender. He looks rather annoyed, but doesn't retaliate. Ta ask for another drink. Sure, buddy, no problem. Just slap me your empty glass, and when you're done, I'll take care of it. Place glass. Put sand in glass. You'd have to take the beach first. Okay. What kind of beach bar lacks at least one girl in a bikini, at least one man who's badly sunburnt? I don't know. I don't know. Look at beach chair. Oh, the time changed. Contrary to the nature of beach chairs, this lo does not look like it would eat you if you attempted to set it up. In fact, it is already set, but it looks rather comfortable. The chair itself has a dull beige floor pattern. Uh, look at glass. Drops of moisture run down the frosted sides of the glass that is empty. Put glass on counter. You set the glass on the bar. With a warm smile, the bartender grabs the glass from the bar counter and quickly flicks it over the scanner. Almost immediately, another banana de curie appears on the counter. He tosses the empty glass behind the bar, out of sight. Pick up drink. Throw drink at bartender. The bartender snatches it. He accepts the drink. Let me get that one for you. He throw. He waves the drink by the scanner. Another frosted glass appears. Okay. It does get mighty hot working back here. You might enjoy. Might, you're mighty nice to take an interest. He empties the the glass almost faster than the previous drink. The bartender attempts to drop the glass over his back and kick the glass behind the bar. He misses completely. <coughs> uh oh, here it begins. Um. And looks a little sheepish as he picks it up and carefully picks up the empty glass away. He takes off the sandal and shakes the sand out of it. Can I get soft lock by being time gated? Also, Doc spends hours throwing drinks at bartenders. Well, I still have an hour, so I am being aware of time. But <laughs> I'm trying to break this thing. Pick up glass. Uh, throw glass at bartender. The bartender snatches it again. He thankfully accepts it. Same thing as before. I was hoping you'd offer. He sucks down the drink like a man dying of thirst. Hmm, I make him good, don't I? I mean, it. I mean, you know. His gaze starts to get unfocused as he pushes the empty glass slowly behind the bar, very carefully placing it in the correct spot. When he succeeds, he looks up at you and grins in triumph. We're doing it again. Pick up glass. Throw glass at bartender. Uh, 
he, he snatches it out of his out of the air again the bartender shakily accepts the proffered drink let me guess you another one buddy he waves the drink in front causing the scanner and suddenly his hand slip causing the drink to pause in front of the beam immediately three drinks appear on the bar counter whoopsie now i've done it oh well i guess i might as well clean them up he downs a drink in his hand eliminating the empty eliminates the empty does the same for the for two of the glasses on the bar kindly leaving one of them for you the end result is one very happy if somewhat bleary bartender um we're gonna save so i'm wondering if i can punch him now oh god erase the You tap him in the head and he looks dumbfounded. You try it again, he delivers the same expression. You can do this for hours. The bartender attempts to straighten his shirt. He ends up with two sides that will not equal out no matter how hard he tries. On the fifth pull, he just gives up. Punch. What do you mean? What? I didn't tap him in the head. Punch him. Punch the bartender. Pick up glass. Throw glass at bartender oh the bartender shakily accepts the proffered drink let me guess you another one buddy he looks at the drink warily as if it's going to snap his head off all right uh in one smooth motion he tilts the glass to his mouth and drains it after a second of internal checking he smiles seemingly pleased with himself with the outcome of the drink then he burps once and falls onto the bar unconscious Uh, search. Ah, take drink. You take the frosted glass of the beach bar. The bartender sings something very softly in his sleep. You can't make it out, but it seems to involve somebody named Marjorie. Take towel. Whoops. Shit. Take towel. Uh, look at bartender the bartender's collapsed onto the bar he looks comfortable and ha happy though he snores peacefully even in his sleep he holds his rag tightly like a security blanket the bartender sings something very softly in his sleep you can't quite make it out but it seems to involve somebody named michelle um yo nate is this on gog no i don't think so i'm playing this off my own copy um but well, it's good to see you, Nate. You took like five or six. It's like rum. Can we now punch him? I Do I just quit? Because I don't know if we broke the system. I think there'll be a glitch, right? I think we'd have to see a visible glitch. Um, this one came on floppies, right? Not CD. It came on both. The first release was on floppy disk. The second release, which I have... Uh, which is, is on CD. The Legend games are on... GOG? I thought uh, Gateway wasn't on there. I know certain games are on there, but I don't know if Gateway's on there. You still haven't found a box copy of this or the sequel? Um... Yeah, I have a copy of both now. Uh, I had a copy of... Um... Oh, it's right there. There's a re-release. It's the second release. It's a CD release. Um, and uh, I've, I recently picked up Homeworld or Gateway 2. All right. Um... Undress. Bartender. <laughs> The bartender really wouldn't appreciate someone trying to undress him. Search. Bartender. Uh, okay, take rag. You can't seem to pry the cloth from the fingers of the comatose bartender. Each time you try, he frowns and holds it tighter. tighter. Throw glass at bartender. 
You throw the frosted glass at the bartender. It strikes a glancing blow, but then infection the frosted glass falls to the ground nearby. Oop, pick up glass. I've heard that the gateway MT32 and Gateway 2 is some of the most complex usage of the MT32 in games up to that point. Really? I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Hey there, Flying Beat. How you doing? They don't have Unreal 2 anymore. Yeah, they delisted all the classic Unreal games. I need to make more MPU 401 cards. Oh, right. You, you were doing those before. You did a search of the game and also was a player... Yeah, it was a series of books well from what i understand and the book series is supposed to be good did i break it i don't know if i broke it i would think i would have gotten some kind of prompt um let's quit press escape button uh you touch the red button your scene immediate, the scene immediately starts to disintegrate before your eyes. The hues and colors of the virtual world swirl in a soft cloud and drift away. Soon you're back in the real world, but after images of the alternate reality linger in the back of your mind. The tech glances over to you from his alcove. Have a nice trip! So I guess it didn't work. I guess I had to do more. Technician ignores. Obviously reading the newsletter is more important to him than anything you could be talking about. Take pin. Take off collar. Whoops. Whoops. I keep using F3 as a on instinct. Uh, take off collar. Take pin. Okay, so we didn't do it. So I have to reload this because I wasted so much time. Um, look at ocean. The ocean is somewhat fuzzy and out of focus. You could swear that it actually changes shades of blue in cycles, or sometimes even shifts to a purple or red. Um, the bartender eyes your drink with something more than professional curiosity. <laughs> Swim in ocean. Each time you approach the ocean, it seems to move farther away, mirage-like. Hmm. Look at sky. The multi-hued sky is beautiful, although the clouds seem to move a bit faster than normal. Hmm. So you can never really go into the ocean, eh? You're always kind of stuck. Beach chair. Look under beach chair. What are you looking for, Dust? Kick beach chair. You bang on the beach chair, but it just sits there. Take rag. Hey, I let you have it, but then what would I do with my time? Hit bartender. You tap him in the head and he looks dumbfounded. You try it again, he delivers the same expression. You could do this for hours. <laughs> um. Legend Entertainment? Yeah, I used to. Uh, Cypher, you're not actually... Uh, you really shouldn't post sites that have website uh, downloads that, I mean, as long as it's not a direct download, I guess it's fine, but abandonware sites are technically against TOS. So if you don't mind, please don't post that in chat. Uh, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're, if you're knowledgeable enough, yeah, you can find it anywhere, but yeah, um, it's not post sites that you can download games from 
Can someone actually remove that? Just... Is there any way... Is there a mod in chat that can take care of that? If not... <laughs> that's fine. Um, it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, just be aware of that next time you type in the chat. Uh, and also be aware sometimes, it, depending on, the, on where you're in, you might get in trouble for that. <laughs> uh, thank you for whoever did that. Thank you. Yeah, some, some places. Um. I didn't know what the site was not. It, it's a, so. If it's, I've been on that website. If they, if it's available for legal purchase, then it's fine. Uh, but if it's not, they'll have a link. But in the end, it is a gray area. It's a very gray area, and uh, I mean, yes, they're no one's really upholding their r trademark or thing, but it's please delete my remarks too. Why? What did you write? <laughs> I don't know what you wrote, but that got wiped too? Um. Alright, it's fine. I mean, I don't know what you said, Tsukagura, but... It, yeah. I mean, it's not a problem. Cypher, Tsukagura, it's not a problem. You can discuss it. And in fact, you didn't post a link... Uh, cipher, so it's, I guess it's okay, but in general, yeah. Um, just to play it safe. Um, let's, let's not tempt fate. <laughs> uh. I mentioned a certain action. I mean, I, re I can read what you did. I mean, well, I can read what you wrote. I mean, I don't think that's necess that's not a whatever. You can say you de you downloaded it. I mean, but I mean, just don't post like actual links. <laughs> I mean, even Cypher didn't do that, so. Um, let this be a lesson to us all for getting what you asked for. You, yes, that's true. You did ask for it. <laughs> you got all your comments deleted, so there you go. <laughs> um, all right, so... Uh, what is that behind the bartender? Scanner? Scanner? The scanner is a platform that reaches out from behind the bar. Two arms bend up from opposite sides of the scanner like miniature goal posts, and a beam of light passes between them. The bartender sees you looking at the scanner over and says, it makes my job fairly simple, but only trained professionals can handle it. It's very sensitive. Oh, what if I put the drink in the scanner? Taking the frosted glass first. The bartender quickly stops you from getting the glass anywhere near the scanner. Sorry, but the scanner is extremely sensitive. Let me do that for you. Not quite right, eh? Too warm, perhaps? Well, let's just whip you up another. He with a warm smile and unfocused eyes, the gar bartender grabs a glass from you and, seeing that the glass is full, dumps the liquid in the sand and quickly flicks it over the scanner. Almost immediately, another banana decurie appears on the counter. He tosses the empty glass behind the bar out of sight. So... Some combination of getting this guy drunk and using that scanner to break the VR system is what we probably need to do. I didn't post links. I don't even know what a link is. It's Link of Zelda. You don't know what a link is, Suikagura? <laughs> Chrome can mute a whole site but not individual tabs. What do you mean, Nukem? You can mute. You can mute a tab in Chrome. Can't you? All right, so the bartender runs his rag in a random fashion. Okay, drink, no, uh, throw drink at bartender. Whoops. Okay, so now he's unconscious. 
He got me another drink. Okay. Place. Pick up glass. Place glass on scanner. You set the glass right on top of the scanner. It cuts through the pulsing beam and a drink immediately appears on the bar. As the beam continues to strike the glass, more drinks appear on the bar surface. They start piling up, spilling the f their frothy liquid over the sand. The pile reaches higher and higher. The drinks coming faster and faster until the heap of glasses seem to push back the boundaries of the reality. Something snaps and the veil of virtuality falls down like a curtain. Your score has just gone up by 10. Boom, baby! <laughs> Let's go! Your hu the hues and colors of the virtual world swirl in a soft cloud and drift away. Soon. 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 You are back in the real world, but after images of the alternate reality linger in the back of your mind. The tech looks over you with, re with renewed respect. He flips over the promised golden pin, which lands nearby. Not bad for a rookie. You just might have some VR hacking potential. So we got it. Look at pin. It's a gaudy golden pin with the Pendrelza Club engraved upon it. Take pin. You can't do that while well. take off collar. Whoops. You unsnap the latch and slip out of the collar. Pick up pin. Getting off the couch first, your score has just gone up by 10. You take the membership pin. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Good QA testing? Yes. And with just over half an hour left until our class starts. Cool. Um, status. We have a score of 35 out of 1600 <laughs> and 105 turns. You have an account balance of $1,500. All right. 06. Got. In. Okay. Talk to tech. All right, we can leave now. I think we got what we needed. What's that thing on the top? Is that a poster? It's a flashy Neotech sales calendar and a triumph of targeted marketing. The picture for May shows a scantily clad woman fawning over someone who looks remarkably like a VR tech. The blur below announces an upcoming sexually oriented virtuality. You manage to tear your eyes away from the picture long enough to notice that the date is from 05-17-2102. is not that today's date? Besides getting him drunk, what else did I have to do? Oh, so there was a scanner that when he gets the drink, he scans for a new drink. So you have to first knock him out, and then you place the drink on the scanner. Because it's so sensitive, it just keeps spawning endless drinks and it broke the VR system. Yo, this is new music. Oh, yeah, this is the... Yo, the music is really good. So membership pin, debit card, and a data man. You're wearing a blue coverall, some boots, and a white badge. Alright, we're 
back down the lobby. What is in? Ah, uh, conference hall. We'll leave. Okay, so we got half an hour. the Hichi Town to the north and Gateway Museum to the south. Okay, so we go that way. Alright, so this is level dog. This will lead us down to the corridor to the south. Um, so we go down. Alright, we're now in level Tanya. So... three p.m. Room T20. We have to go to the west. There's still no one here, right? Can we just wait? Shit. <laughs> you can wait. <laughs> wait, time passes. The conference room fills with would-be prospectors, most of whom you recognize from the long flight from Earth. Almost everybody looks a little lost, homesick, and frightened. The middle-aged Hispanic man shuffles into the conference room. A middle-aged, a middle-aged Hispanic man shuffles into the conference room and heads for the front of the room. He is dressed in a corporation science staff uniform. Okay. So. Save. Uh office no uh class i should probably put the time down as well listen to lecture listen you don't hear anything very interesting right now a few stragglers run down the corridor and rush into the conference room Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hechi Ship Handling Course. My name is Hector Gomez. I work for the Corporation Science Section, and I am your instructor. The data man personal information systems that were issued by your proctors contain almost all of the material that we will cover today. When you actually sign up for a mission, you will be able to use your data man to look up reference information. The good news is that these Hechi ships are not hard to operate. In fact, they are pretty much idiot-proof, much easier than driving a car. They steer themselves and require no maintenance. I will now walk you through the information contained in your data man about the corporation, the ships, and a typical mission profile. Oh, I got it. Hector talks about the corporation, the ships, and the guidance systems. Your eyes begin to glaze over as his voice rolls over you, a seemingly en unending monotone that takes you back to your college days. Oh, that's, that's a lot like me. All right. God damn it. I have to reload this because I missed one. You son of a monkey. Load. Restore. Class. You bought this on eBay. Yo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You're going home in a box. You pathetic descendant of monkeys. All right, there you go. Finally, Hector concludes the, the rote repetition of material from the data man. You shake your head, yawn, and return your attention to the front of the room. Hector is talking. I will now issue flight crew badges. Don't let these out of your sight. These badges are for much more than just access control. Each, on each badge is a black strip that has co computer-coded information on it. 
This coded information is actually a list of six courses, course codes that the corporation has assigned to you. While you are free to enter any course code that strikes your fancy, I think you'll be better off using the ones that are assigned to you. Why? Because you can avoid the mistakes of prospectors that have gone before you. Course codes have resulted in known fatalities, have been excluded from the base uh, used to select those that were assigned to you. Your odds are better with the corporation codes, new fish, and that is all that counts. Okay. To sign up for a mission, just go down to the hangar entrance on level Tanya with your blue badge. The agent will sign you up and escort you to a prep ship and then help you enter the course codes that have been assigned to you in, on, into the onboard computer. Now, give me your white badges and I'll give you blue badges. You're now flight crew. Hector collects white badges and hands out blue badges. You clip on your new flight crew badge. And my score went up by 10. All right, cool. Uh, MS-DOS. I, I feel like... Was Gateway ported to other systems? I don't remember. It might have been on... Commodore? I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Hope you enjoy the game, Nukem. Um... It had a Mac release? Nice. Um, it seems like a Mac interface. <laughs> All right, so oh, we got the blue badge. The badge is a blue plastic card with an obsidian black strip on one side. You're wearing the badge. He looks around. Questions? Feel free to ask me about every anything. Okay. Ask about green badges. Please specify, oh, ask Hector about green badges. I can't help you there. What do I want to ask him? Ask Hector about Hichi. We all wish we knew more about the Hichi. Oh, maybe I should have put green badge instead of badges. Okay, let's restore that then. <laughs> restore. Hector Gormez is about five foot nine, plump with a receding hairline and a friendly face. He is wearing a corporation science staff uniform. Okay. Mac games are all about those scroll bars? Yeah. I wonder if Tony has this game. He probably does. He has like all the box games almost. Um, ask Hector about blue badge. Ask Hector about green badge. You'll have to talk to someone else about that. That information is sensitive. Jesus, what the hell am I supposed to ask him about? Ask Hector about a rhyme program. Tom Seldridge was in the 657th course. He apparently learned enough to stay alive. See that you do the same. Hector Ways, class dismissed. The conference room empties. The class is over. Well, there's nothing else I could have asked for. 
I don't think so. I asked about, I tried to ask about green badges that he said that was above his thing or you can't, well, he doesn't know that's classified. He didn't know anything about the Orion program. Thom. Okay. All right. Um, well, class is over. It is now, uh, three 35. Uh, we can wait till the bar, I guess, but let's keep exploring. We got time. Um, don't want to go check out the museum. So we have to go back to level dog. Exploring before a bar. Uh, no, we're going to go north. Central Park. Ooh, what's that? Is that a rose? You're in the station's hydroponics complex, known to gateway inhabitants of Central Park. Large rectangular hydroponics units filled with plants rise from the deck in several places like miniature skyscrapers. Fruit trees grow in dense patches near the east wall. The air is humid and smells of fruit, fertilizer, and freshly turned earth. In front of you is a mysterious machine that looks like an overburn air conditioner. To your left is a plastic hydroponics planter tray. In the planter tray, you see a rose. Examine rose. The red rose is just coming into bloom and is quite lovely. Its fragile beauty seems out of place in the harsh environment of Gateway. Take rose. You take the rose from the planter tray. Your score has just gone up by two. Um, what is that? Fruit trees. The trees are surprisingly large and seem to be in very good health. The branches are heavy with fruit. Take fruit. You can't reach the oranges. Besides, the corporation takes a dim view of prospectors stealing food from the hydroponics section. Okay. What's this? Look at the machine. The machine is housed inside a large white cube. On the front of the cube, you see an access panel. Located on top of the cube is a red lever with a yellow sign. The machine is making a deep humming noise. When you stand right next to the cube, you can feel the deck vibrating beneath you. Look at yellow sign. Manual feeder system shut down. Pull lever if you see evidence of a massive malfunction of the hydroponics feeder system. Maintenance personnel will appear on the scene within five minutes. Use only in case of emergency. Uh, look at the plants there are plants of every variety and description growing in the hydroponics racks and trays debit card no debit card machine membership pin plants racks racks Central Park is filled with hydroponics racks and trays. The racks are large boxy units and with row upon row of shelves filled with plants, light grow lights, sprinklers, and nutrient drip feeders. All right, so I think I've looked at everything here. Look at access panel. The access panel for the control box is a grate about two feet tall and four feet wide. The panel is hinged at the top and has a latch with a distinctive four leaf clover shaped pattern. The panel is latched shut. Mm, you will, you thoroughly enjoy text adventures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It seems good so far. I looked this game up a couple of months ago. I was surprised at how long the speed run takes for this game. 30 minutes. 20 minutes, <laughs> 10 minutes, eight minutes, eight minutes. It's eight minutes, isn't it? The speed run is always a surprising number, no matter which game. Is it eight minutes? Um, 
I'm a little off two hours in. <laughs> uh, Salmon Central Park. You are in the station's hydroponics complex, known to gateway inhabitants of Central Park. Large rectangular hydroponics units filled with plants rise from the deck in silver places, like in miniature sky like miniature skyscrapers. Oh, I thought these were buildings. Oh my god, those are plants. <laughs> Few trees, fruit trees grow in dense patches near the east wall. The air is humid and smells of fruit, fertilizer, and freshly turned earth. In front of you is a mysterious machine that looks like an overgrown air conditioner. To your left is a plastic hydroponics planter tray. I thought these were buildings. These are just oh my god. Oh, yo, can you actually see my mouse when it's like, oh, you can, you can. Yeah, I didn't, re I didn't notice the plant life there. Oh, okay, cool. I thought these were just buildings. Um, if you finish, that's my personal best. That's true. That's very true. That's very true. Um, no worries, Mr. Doc. Doc I'm always off. Uh, all right. Out, I just means leave. Okay. So let's go south. Let's go back here. All right, so I have the rose. What happens if we give the rose to her? Examine rose. The red rose is just coming into bloom and is quite lovely. Its fragile beauty seems out of place in the harsh environment of Gateway. Examine dead rose. The dead rose is wilted in black. It is sitting in a vase. Talk to receptionist. Hmm. Give Rose to save. Okay. Give Rose to receptionist. The receptionist disposes of the old Rose and puts the new one in the vase. She gives you a big smile. Thanks, you're sweet. But I'm not going out with you, if that was what you were thinking. Why don't you take this magazine? It'll keep you company in towel space. She hands you the magazine. Your score just gone up by five. Score! That's all I wanted was score. Nice. Um, relationship? Pooh. <laughs> magazine, please. Read magazine. You flip to the cover story and begin reading. One year before fame prospector Rolf Becker embarked on his ill-fated final mission, he married uh, Adriana Lafour, daughter of Corporation VP Edwin Lafour. The marriage was in trouble within six months when Adriana, Adriana announced that she was bored with Rolf. Since Becker's disappearance, however, Adriana has gone through a profound change. I had a lot of growing up to do before Rolf left, said Adriana to IP. I realize now what I had in him. Adriana continues to live on Gateway, and her offer of $1 million for information or action leading to Becker's safe return lead still stands. The article continues for several more pages, but nothing it seems to contain nothing else of interest. Okay, Adriana Lafour. Seeking Rolf Becker's location. One million dollar reward. If we can find Becker. Is this a side quest or main quest? Are they going to merge into the stereo quest? I think our main quest is strike rich or die trying. <laughs> Okay. What's next? What's next for me? Um, explore? Um, east is the bar, which is where we need to be. At what time? Eight o'clock. We have four hours. Just over. Mmm... So, hmm. 
The Gateway Museum. The Gateway Museum contains examples of alien artifacts that prospectors have discovered in the years since the exploration program was started. The exhibits consist of things that he chi hands, tentacles, claws, have made and touched that come from an unimaginable place that's incredibly far away. You notice a black pedestal and a chrome display stand that are prominently situated in the middle of the room. On the stand, you see a Hichi device. On the pedestal, you see a tuning fork. Uh, I'm in and out. How did we go from the beach in Hawaii to an alien spaceship? Because we started, we were, we've always been on the alien. We've been on a alien base, which is now home. People use it as a, they call it gateways. Humanity found it abandoned. Um, and the, the, the beach is VR. <laughs> the beach is VR. We've always been on the station. All right. So the museum. So on the stand, you see a Hichi device. You know, one thing I would have liked is if this sorted, I know it's alphabetical, I think, but it would have been nice if I know you could look at inventory, but if these are all the objects that you can like interact with, including your inventory, it would have been nice if your inventory was listed first with like a dotted line, kind of like here with like environmental stuff that you could interact with like after that. So kind of like how they separate these two with a dotted line, like stuff in your inventory you can interact with and stuff down there. That would have been good. That would have been a nice little change. Um, that being said, uh, examine all. <laughs> Why examine? Oh, sorry. Erase. Examine all. Yes. You can't use more than one direct object with a verb examine. Really? Then why'd you offer it? <laughs> Take all. The room is filled with the sound of an obnoxious clack on. Or clacks on. Clacks on? And in a synthesized voice states, Warning, these exhibits are protected by an optical pattern recognition system. Replace artifact immediately or you will be placed under arrest. <laughs> uh, 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 undo. Undo all. Undo. Undo. <laughs> you can undo it. If you do undo, does that actually fast forward time? So let me see, take all. Undo all. It rewound time. Wow. That makes sense, I guess, but still, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> you can undo stuff. All right. Um, a black pedestal and a chrome display. So we can take both of these items. Uh, at pedestal? The black obsidian pedestal is about four feet high. It has a smooth upper surface and a silver plaque affixed to one side. On the display stand, you see a Hichi artifact that looks like a tuning fork. Examine tuning fork. The artifact looks like a conventional tuning fork, about 10 inches long with a square base and two t long t tines. It is made of silver blue Hichi metal. Look, examine Hichi device. The strange looking device is about the size and shape of a toaster oven. An opening on one side reveals mirrored interior surfaces. On top of the device is a circular depression about 10 centimeters across. Hmm. Um, there's no, oh, we can go north. Is that the, oh, that's the exit, right? Yeah. The museum walls align with exhibits. We can't interact with those. 
And then what? Double click to pick up. <laughs> put it back. Put it back. Put it back. Uh, undo. If you do undo all, so it's the last move. Okay. Ah, uh, just undo. Can you undo, can you just keep undoing? No. All right. Can I give you an interface tip? Um, no, I'll stick with what I know right now. I mean, I don't feel like there's anything particularly that I need to know right now. I don't feel like it. I mean, I don't feel that there's anything that's pressing. Um, depression. Examine the depression. Oh, <laughs> let's examine depression. The circular depression is on top of the device. It's about 10 centimeters in diameter. Right. I don't think I have anything. No. I wish there was music. That's the only thing. Look at the walkway. A walkway connects the second story of the corporation office structure to the blue hell bar. Behind the large round windows, you can see the silhouettes of people. Oops. Is West my room? Yeah, it is. We've been there. Let's go up to Tanya. Oh no, babe, babe. East, east, whoa. Quarter B7. The quarter comes to a dead end before you with the familiar human construction giving way to the strange, almost melted look of Hiji metal. The Hiji metals emit it's a, blue, a soft blue glow. I guess we can't touch metal. The metal feels warm and tingly to the touch. Can we could touch it, right? Can we touch the um the in the museum, the stuff? I wonder I could roll it back and see. Quarter B4. The corridor comes to a dead end before you with a familiar human construction giving way to the strange, almost melted look of glowing blue Hiji metal. The Hiji metal wall is uniform in appearance. You see a crate here. Examine crate. An empty supply crate sits in the middle of the corridor. It is square, about two meters wide and a little over a meter tall, made of aluminum and tough hexar plastic. One side of the crate is open. Stamped on another side of the crate is the following. Machine parts embarked 1228-2101, shipment AX5062. Shuttle run 1203 manifest number 54389-A-390-D. Dash 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 Origin Los Angeles, transshipped via Venus Prime. Do I need to know what this is? Oh dear God. Maybe I do. Uh, I'll just copy the important stuff. Crate in quarter B4. In level babe. <laughs> Stupid name. Uh, AX5062. One, two, zero, three, shuttle. Five, four, three, eight, nine, dash A, dash three, nine, zero, dash D. Okay. Uh, shipment. Okay. Babe, pig in space. Uh, take crate. The crate is much too large to take. Get inside crate. 
You hide inside the supply crate. Whoa, what? Wait. Open. Look. <laughs> Get. Open crate. Oh, close crate. Get out of crate. Huh. Interesting. I thought. Okay, let me reload that. <laughs> it's a bit of time I wasted for no reason. It's also six. Uh, it's six. Huh. Was it always? Did that? Okay. You know what? Let's reload. Um. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Give roads to receptionist. Free magazine. Oops. Okay. So we got we gave the rose. Um We got some music back at least. Has the music cut out in other locations like the bar or the beach? It didn't cut out in I haven't I don't know about the bar, but it didn't cut out on the beach. It touch fork. You run your fingers over the artifact. The Hiji metal feels warm and tingly, not like anything made on Earth. Touch device. You run your fingers over the device. The Hiji metal feels warm and tingly. On the surface of the device, you feel a depression that is about 10 centimeters across. Touch depression. Yeah, they're awesome. You had no idea there was a game based on Ferder Pull's work. The only similar game I can think of is Rama from Arthur C. Clarke. Hmm. So Frederick Pohl, I guess, is a... Good author? Good sci-fi? Something that you recommend? You might be, might be limited to just this track. I think uh, Bloody Cactus was talking about it earlier. He says legend games seem to be known for the music cutting out. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll be, I'd love to hear constant songs because the music is good. Frederick Pohl is up there with Asimov and Clark in a lot of people's eyes. Really? And here's where it stops. The Rhyme Adventure game is pretty good. I gotta play that. Hmm. So we can't take him. Or can we? <laughs> you can. Huh. Pole is one of the big sci-fi authors who doesn't get noticed because there was never any movie made of his works. I always get Pole mixed up with the guy who wrote Ringworld. Oh, or Larry Niven. Here's a question: Have three? Have there been any modern games officially based on sci-fi novels? Yeah, sure. Stalker based on. Um. Uh, Roadside Picnic. Ring World had video games, point and clicks. Two point and clicks based on Ring World um, that I've played through. Um, but like modern, I mean 90s is when Ring World came out. <laughs> um, 
they are making a they are making a sci-fi game um based on a novel from Stanislav Lem. Um I think they just released a demo of it, I think. Uh the something. I forgot the name of the game. Um The starts with an I, maybe? Um, the Iron Rat? No. Oh, man. Let me look it up. Let me see. The Invincible. They're making a game based on The Invincible. There you go. There's a link to the Steam page. I think they put out a demo. I think content creators can request a key for a demo. I should contact them. I'm a content creator. It's made by, It's being published by 11-Bit Studios who did uh, This War of Mine and Frostpunk, but it's being developed by someone else. Um, all right. Um, what else? Modern games based on novels. Whew. Modern games based on novels. Does Dune count? <laughs> they're making a modern games. They're, they're still making games based on Dune. So I guess. Um, modern, modern games. Yo, Brother Moody. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Hmm. Anyways, I just stole items from the museum and I'm probably going to get in trouble. There's a foundation FPS in development. <laughs> I haven't wa read any of the foundation novels, but I watched the show and I was like, hmm, really? The Witcher. Yeah, yeah, The Witcher. Yeah, The Witcher is based on books, but yeah, that's true. The Witcher. I forgot about that. Um, a military policeman arrives and points his weapon at you. Freeze! You're under arrest. The MP returns the missing items and takes you in for processing. He lectures you on the vice of theft, informs you that he'd been charged a $1,000 fine, and states that another offense may result in your expulsion from Gateway. He then returns you to your quarters. <laughs> All my money. I have no money. <laughs> I had 500. Where's all my money? It's in status. I have 500. Wow. Can we do it again if we could get the game over? Yeah, I saved. So let's just steal it. <laughs> Wow, you can just... Okay. Another offense may result in expense. Okay, so... Nothing happened. Alright, let's just restore the game. Okay. You did specify sci-fi. All right, you did, you did. Cyberpunk 2077 is based on a tabletop RPG, which is a book. 
So the book came out first, then the tabletop RPG? Telltale's doing an Expanse game. They are. They are. It seems if any book is going to get adapted, it's going to be into a movie, especially sci-fi. I just wait I guess I just go to the bar and wait for him was there anything else for me to do I feel like that no okay let's just let's go let's go buy this dude a drink let's see let's wait Wait until 20. You can wait until 2000. Okay. Yo, he said you'd be here. Blue Hell Bart, 8 p.m. There he is. You have to wait for 2001. Time passes. Dom Seldridge strides into the bar, looks around. Okay. Looks around and spots you. He walks over to the counter, sits down on one of the bar seats. Uh, giving you a quick smile, he takes out his debit card, inserts it into the counter slot, and orders two drinks from the order panel. Hey, new fish, good to see you, he says with somewhat forced enthusiasm. Uh... Buy Thom Drink. Thom Drink does not seem to be here. Okay. Look at Tom Seldridge. Tom Seldridge is a cocky but capable prospector who has been assigned to be your prospector, uh, your proctor for the first for your first day on Gateway. He is of medium height, pale with short blonde hair, but appears to stand straight up. He is wearing dark glasses. Look at the order panel. Drinks ordered on the way! Flashes in red letters. The famous Gateway Robotics bartender trundles over to where you are standing. It extends a tray bearing two full glasses. Thom immediately takes his drink from his from the tray and raises it to his lips. He tosses back a third of the contents. Damn, that is good, he says with a real feeling in his voice. Uh, take the drink. The robot bartender emits a happy cheap as you take the drink. This is where everybody hangs out. There is a casino with some pretty good action next door. You ought to check out the roulette wheel because they use very dense, low overball, oversized balls because of the low G environment. It's kind of cool. served. Look at the order panel. You find all kinds of people on Gateway. Prospectors from all 40 countries, plus over 40 countries, not all 40. Over 40 countries, plus the usual assortment of space squids, or navy personnel off the Sentinel cruisers. Most folks are American, European, Japanese, and Brazilian, as you expect with those countries owning the corporation, eh? The robotic bartender's trunk goes away. By the time I'm through talking, you'll know all I know about this place. You'll spend most of your time on Gateway on two levels, Dog and Tanya. We are on Dogtown now. Tanya is where entrances to the ship hangars are located. It also houses work spaces, 
conference rooms, and the military armory. Ask about dog. Which dog do you mean? <laughs> Ask Thom about dog? No. Ask about Orion. Ask... <laughs> Thom finishes his drink and tosses the empty glass in the general direction of the robot bartender. Ask Thom about Orion. You'll know all I know by the time I'm done, you fish. Be a little patient. Tom looks at you expectantly. Um. Counter slot? Examine? Can I just do that? Doesn't it strike you that talking to a counter slot is just a little strange? No, examine. Counter slot. A small placard above the slot says, Insert your Gateway Enterprises debit card here. Tom taps his hand on the bar counter and gazes longingly at the glasses other bar customers are holding. Okay. Put... Debit card... In slots. You insert the debit card into the slot in the bar counter. The bar computer hums and the order panel lights up with a menu of exotic, exo exotic cocktail selections. You order a drink for Tom Seldridge. He nods in appreciation. The bar computer acknowledges your order with a series of musical notes and spits out your debit card. Drink. Drink. <laughs> you gulp down your Heechee Town special. Your eyes bulge out, your little, the little hairs on your neck stand up, and your stomach is coated with a wave of cold fire. You put the empty glass on the counter, your head spinning. You barely notice as the glass is whisked away by the robot bartender. Tom grins at you. Excellent drink, hey! Tom hums a few bars of a song popular on Earth several months ago. Ask Tom, Tom about green badge green badges are for orion program participants tom Thom rums his hands in anticipation as he follows the movements of the robotic bartender with his eyes the famous gateway robotic bartender trundles over to where he's st standing it extends a tray bearing a full glass Thom reaches for his new drink and gulps down half of it before you can even blink Talk to robot? Doesn't it strike you that talking to a little... Ro okay, it's strange. Okay. I'll tell you some things you ought to know. Some things that br the brochures on Earth conveniently don't mention. First, you gotta realize that not all prospectors are created equal. There are two kinds of prospectors on Gateway. The Suicide Squad and the Green Badges. The, robo the robotic bartender trundles away. So... I'm the Suicide Squad. Ask Thom about Suicide Squad. You don't need to use the word suicide in this game. You just brought up the stupid Suicide Squad. <laughs> what? You said it, not me. Um... You and me, we're on the Suicide Squad. We come off the Earth's transports like cattle, we learn how to push the go button on the Heechee starships, and we ship out. The odds aren't too good, new fish. We die like flies. It's common for a ship to pop out of Tal space on the core of a star next to a black hole or a neutron star, or an orbit around some hell planet that'll kill you before you can even land on its surface. We're expandable and don't meet Diddly the Corporation. One of us doesn't come back. Well, it's no big thing. Um, about Tau space. Whoa!
Let's give your voice a rest and put the rest of the game through TTS. See Doc smile. Rev, thank you so much for the tier two sub. Thank you so much for the tier two sub of five months. I uh, hope you continue to enjoy the emotes and your expanded emote slots. Um, your set, email set. Um, thank you so much, Rev. I actually did Google how to, if there was a way to get a DOS game to output text or read text and output as TTS, but I couldn't find anything. <laughs> Uh, oh, Rev, thank you so much. <laughs> Music is good, though. Ask Tom about Tal Space. Thank you again, Rev. It's good to see you. Hope you're doing well. You don't... Ask Tom about Corporation. Big, cold, and impersonal. Just what everybody thinks when you think about a heartless multinational corporation. Now, the green badges, they're different. Officially, they're part of the Orion program. That means they're on the corporation's A-team, a select group of prospectors who have supposedly proven themselves and earned a place in the program. They get to go to briefings held by the Corporation Science Division, where special primo course codes are handed out by corporation eggheads. You're home and can relax. I can't ask more from that. Nice. Did you make anything good? Was there anything delicious made today that you could only sample? <laughs> I wonder if you could do TTS with older games that run in console or whatever. Zork TTS. I don't know. I tried looking it up if anything was there. The closest I could find was TTS available for people with disabilities, but was it was allowed them to speak as opposed to reading off something pre like like on a screen and doing TTS that way. Um, but my my I was on a phone trying to Google it, so it wasn't exactly spending too much time on it. Today sucked. I did no cooking. What? I'm in fact a meat popsicle. Ugh. Are we all meat popsicles in the end? Alright. Um. Ask Tom about Orion program. You'll know all I know by the time I'm done. Oh, Jesus. Be a little patient. If you haven't figured it out by now, you can tell who they are because the corporation gives them green badges. Suicide Squad gets blue badges. It's not like the Orion program is a secret. In fact, the corporation advertises the program as if it were some kind of prize available to everybody who does great and wonderful things. Should I order another drink? I know better. The only way to sign up for the Orion program is to be sponsored by your corporation rep. And I don't th and don't think that the process is easy. My rep won't even talk to me. Tom pauses and rubs his chin. Hmm. Let's see, who is your rep? He wonders aloud. Nielsen! Terry Nielsen! Oh my god. Right, we get a we did get a message from her. have to be sponsored. You saw the title pop up while at work? Glad to catch them. You love the soundtrack? Yeah, it's a great soundtrack. The second one's supposed to be even better. Yo, by the way, Echo, good to see you. And Moonlight, good to see you too. Alright. 
By the time, okay, she's actually pretty cool. Almost a regular guy. She even comes into the blue hell for a drink on some nights. You might actually have a chance of getting one of those green badges if she goes easy on you. Okay. I'll tell you what, new fish. I'll give you my copy of a memo that came out a while back on the Orion program. Give it to Terry when you see her next. She might back you for the program. Tom fumbles around inside his jacket and pulls out a crumpled piece of paper and a pen. She, he writes down something. He writes something on the ba bottom of the sheet of paper and puts the pen back in his jacket and hands the paper to you. Memo is written on corporation letterhead dated and dated April 23rd, 2102. The paper is crumpled and creased. The memo reads as follows. To all limited partners from Corporate Science Section Subject Orion Special Exploration Initiative. As most of you already know, Gateway Enterprises has begun a classified research program officially designated the Orion Special Exploration Initiative and informally known as the Orion Program. Limited partners with exceptional qualifications are invited to apply uh, where is it? <laughs> Our apply to designated gateway representatives. No, to designated gateway enterprises representatives for admittance to the program. Those accepted by the director of gateway exploration programs will be provided with access to research data that may increase the probability of encountering commercially useful Hichi technology during prospecting missions. Scrawled at the bottom in spidery handwritten is the following. New fish, show this to Terry Nielsen. She sometimes hangs out at the Blue Hell Bar around 2200 hours. That's exactly what I need to know. Thank you. Two hundred. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> boop, boop. Tom finishes his drink, or Thom finishes his drink, looks around, and then tosses the empty glass behind the counter. Terry usually shows up at around twenty-two hundred when she comes here. You might want to hang around and just come back later. Thank Tom. Talk to Thom. Tom flashes you a wan smile, his face showing regret, hope, and envy all at the same time. Order a drink? You insert the debit card into the slot into the bar counter. Alright, so I ordered another drink. You insert the debit card, so Hums, he nods and appreciates and smiles at you with genuine friendliness for the first time since you met him. He sits back in his seat, looking like he might be thinking about enjoying himself. The bar computer acknowledges your order with a series of musical tones and spits out your debit card. Take debit card. You already have it. Tom f hums a few bars of a song popular on Earth several months ago. Alright. Tom rubs his hands in anticipation as he follows the movements of the robotic bartender with his eyes. You're not a bad sort, new fish. I'll let you in on some rumors that have been making the rounds. Seems like folks are hooked on the idea that the Heechier left something important on Gateway that hasn't been brought to light yet. Besides the ships, I mean. Oh, okay. Do we... How do we clink glasses together? Like, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Thom? No? What can I do here? Burn, cast, clean, credits, dance, date, hmm. diffuse, deal, destroy, discharge, discuss, 
Dismount, dive. Drink, drop, duck, eat. Examine, fasten, feed. Fire, fix, fold, free. Hop, inventory, kick, kill, kiss. <laughs> Lie down, lift, lock, moon, moon? Hmm. No, offer, order, pet, pass, pick, pray, relax. Scream, sing, skip, sleep, smash, smell, sob, throw up, <laughs> unlock, verbose, version, version. Version 1.1.0. June 26, 1992. Copyright 1992 by Legend Entertainment Corporation. Or company. Whichever. Um, Alright, talk to Thumb. When NASA first explored this station, they found it picked clean except for the ship hangers. Really weird. This great huge f artifact. Obviously an important facility, and yet almost completely empty. When the corporation pukes took over the station, they put their biggest cone heads on the problem. They searched high and low, even took some sort of station, some of the station apart. They didn't find any, they didn't find squad. People are saying that the cone heads didn't look in the right places. That there is something mighty interesting on this station that nobody has found yet. Personally, I think it's a load of horse hockey. I can't believe that the cone heads missed something important while they were exploring, cataloging, and then rebuilding Earth's great new hope. Anyway, that's the hot tip for the month. Listen, I gotta get going. I'll tell you what, new fish. I'll leave you with a gateway legend. I know he's here tonight, after all. He's here every night. I'll try and find him. Hang tight for a minute. Tom gets up and vanishes into the crowd. Wait. Time passes. Tom reappears with a tall, dark man in tow. New fish, this is New Bar Kamalian. He's kind of a fixture in this place. If you're real lucky, Nubar will tell you more about life on Gateway. Now I I have to go. I'll leave you guys to talk. It's been a pleasure, New Fish. Thom leaves. Nubar Chameleon. Chameleon sits next, down next to you and nods in your direction. Let's buy this guy a drink. <laughs> what else can I do? <laughs> yeah, use car debit card. Slots. Uh, where is it? Counter slot. Use counter slot. What? Swipe card? Use debit card. Drink. I assume you mean drink your own drink. You drink down your Heechee Town special. You feel a bit woozy. New bar stares at you. How about a drink, new fish? Yeah, buy drink. There you go. You insert the debit card into the drink slot and the bar counter. The bar computer hums and the bar order panel lights up with a new menu of exotic cocktail solution. You order a drink for yourself and for new bar. Kamalian. The bar computer acknowledges your order and spits out your debit card. Okay. Talk to new bar. Very interesting. So, how's it going? Welcome to Gateway. You made a mega mistake shelling out over 200 grand to come to this miserable godforsaken place. Possibly. I'm still kicking myself for shipping out here 
The Chicken Fat Corporation sure rooked me good, feeding me all that bunko back in East Texas. I was suckered in all the way, put my life savings into a one-way ticket to this hellhole. The famous gateway robotic bartender trunk guy. So, take a drink. I've been here f I've been out five times, nearly killed twice. I landed on one Deirdre class planet, fought my way through a bunch of things that looked like a looked like giant cockroaches, and recovered a box of these discs. Newbar holds up his medallion. All for a f lousy 50k. The corporation thinks these things are some worthless byproduct of some heechy industrial process. I don't believe that for a second. Look at the precision. Look at that precision. Look at the precision. The workmanship. But you can't fight the corporation. Goes to show you, new fish, that you're in for a world of hurt out here. You needed this radio CDC yesterday? Yeah. So far, you spent most of this exciting space game in spa bars. Ex yep. <laughs> seems like a seems like a sci-fi game. Talk to Nubian. Oh wait, what's his name? Newbar? <laughs> Talk to Newbar. <laughs> you can't win! Especially with the corporation geeks giving preference to those Orion bozos. That really pisses me off. Uh, we're cannon fodder for the corporation. They get us to hang out our rear ends and they and do all the sweating and slaving. Then they feed everything they learn from us to their fair-haired boys with the green badges. This place is just unfair, my friend. You sure screwed up coming here. Real bars and VR bars. Exactly, yeah. Waiting for Rex Nebular to show up? <laughs> Rex Nebular. Talk to me, Bar. Well, what can you do? You're here. I'll stop complaining. In fact, I'll make you a generous offer. If you can beat me at the trivia game in the casino, I'll give you this genuine Hechi medallion. Newbar holds up the medallion again, and rainbow patterns dance on the surface of the disc. I challenge all the new fish to the game. To a game, breaks up the routine. He leads you to the casino. Oh shit! I didn't save, man. As you head for the exit, a man wearing a corporation maintenance staff uniform blocks your way. Hey, you can't leave with a glass. Pinhead, you hand him your drink and he scurries off to give it to the bartender. Casino. We're in the casino now. The casino is surprisingly well equipped, given the cost of shipping any kind of mass from Earth. There are slot machines, black jack tables, and a low G roulette table. Near their entrance is a tired looking old Earth trivia game. The bar lies to the west. A heavy oak door is to the east. Nubar plays the game and earns a score of seven points. He turns to you and says, your turn. Uh, let's save. <laughs> trivia. Look at a uh, trivia game. A battered old arcade game sits against one of one wall from the name old earth trivia and dated pictures on the side of the console you deduce that it deals with earthside trivia from the late 20th and 21st centuries okay use or play trivia game one history and geography two art and entertainment three science engineering and nature four games of all kinds all right i'll be right back just give me a second um, get some new water. Shouldn't take too long. I'll be right back.
Oh, the music was too loud? Uh, give me a second. Let me just go back to the BRB screen and adjust it. Also, the desktop audio was playing. <laughs> Let me go back one more time. All right, good to know that. Oh, I gotta mute it. Oh, man. Oh, man, it's gonna play during the BRB music now? Oh, that's gonna suck. So it got both desktop audio running during BRB music. Ooh. I'm gonna have to try and figure that, fix that one out later. Okay. Anyways, get to find these things out early. Um, you're trying to find the track? Yeah, sadly, I don't hear it. I don't hear the music on my end. I don't know what track you're sp speaking of, Rev. <laughs> um, all right, so old Earth trivia, eh? I saved. So... Games of all kinds? What does that mean? It's not a complaint. It's a joy going through the punch. Oh yeah, he's got some great music. Uh, I should check his list and see if we can update it with some new music. There's a very Tron-esque track in there. Tron. I should t I'll take a look and see what it is. All right, games of all kinds. Is that sports? Uh, geez. We'll try history and geography. Historic blunders. After his election as president of the United States in 1996, he accidentally launched a nuclear strike on the unsuspecting resort island resort of Bawana Atok, vaporizing 65 natives, 40 visiting tourists, three sailboats, and a small cruise ships. If it's gonna be making fun of anyone, it's probably Dan Quayle. Danforth Quayle. Mario Cuomo. <laughs> George Bush. After his election as U.S. president in 1996. I mean, this is... So Bill Clinton won. In 90... Wait. Bush was a one-termer. So... I this, I think this is assuming Dan Quayle won. Because Clinton won in like 92 or 93. So... <laughs> I assume that... Because they all assumed Quayle was an idiot. I don't know why, but Al Gore, we're going to pick three. Correct. <laughs> okay. What was the capital of India before it was moved to Greater Bombay in early 2023? Okay, so it's going to be New Delhi. Okay. Weapons too terrible to use. The use of tactical nuclear weapons for the first time in 60 years turned this otherwise unremarkable regional conflict into a historical waste watershed. Hint, the weapons were purchased from dis disaffected Soviet army units soon after the breakup of the USSR. This is like all... What? The use of tactical uh, for the first time in 60 years turned this otherwise unremarkable regional conflict into a historical watershed. The... The Second Iraq War, maybe? Or this War of the Orchid between Chile and Argentina? Well, it won't be the invasion of Kuwait, because that was US. Vietnam was huge for well, the US. It wasn't regional. It would have to be a regional conflict either between Chile and Argentina in the second, both of which don't aren't like. Doc knows about US history more than the US does. So when they refer to regional, it has to be between two countries. So it's either the second Iran-Iraq war or Chile and Argentina. Um, I would assume it's the war, war of the Orchid. The weapons were purchased from the dis disaffected Soviet army units soon after the breakup of the USSR. The second Iran-Iraq war would make sense because it's closer geographically. So let's try four. 
Shit. <laughs> what a guess. Okay. Uh, state capital. What is the state capital of the U.S. state of Southern California? Southern California? Hint, the capital of Northern California, Sacramento. What? <laughs> I would imagine it's... San Diego? Oakland is near San Francisco. Eureka, I don't know where that is. San Jose, I don't know. I feel like San Diego's really close to the Mexico. If I had to guess, it'd be San Diego. Shit, okay. San Diego. Countries of the world, what was the name of the African People's Republic force bef before the first elected black government changed the country's name in the last decade? of the 20th century. What was the name of the Africa Pe Rep People's Republic uh, before the first elected black government changed the country's name in the last decade of the 20th century? Uh, what was the name of the African People's Republic changed the country's name in the last decade? South Africa... South Africa was named South Africa even before. I hate easy part targets. Die, you furnace freak. I, I think it's Zaire because they changed it to Zaire. Yes. Did you read the books or every single page of the main data main quiz? No. Yo, can't see. Did that even show up? No, you can't. Did that show up? Yo, Rev! I just noticed, I, I was so engrossed in trying to think. Yo, um, Rev gifting us up to Bitumen. Bitumen, I hope you enjoyed the subs and the uh, emotes. Um, I hope you like them. Uh, Rev, that's your 17th gift sub. Thank you so much, Rev. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you, thank you. Did I read the books or every single page? I did not, Ryu. How would this be in there? No way. <laughs> Um, I would assume it's Zaire. Because they changed their name to Congo. But I don't know when that was. Um. I thought Rhodesia became South Africa. Also, I should probably figure this out myself, right, Astral? Doc focus should be an email. I had a focus mode enabled thing for a while, but that was for something else. <laughs> uh, Zaire? Rhodesia became Zimbabwe? I thought the Rhodesia became South Africa. Fiddleford. What is the name of the African People's Republic before? What is the name of the African People's Republic before the first elected black government changed the country's name? So it wouldn't be South Africa. But I think the country's are like the current name, right? Is that what you're not referring to? What is the name of the African People's Republic before the first elected book changed the country's name in the last decade? So it's asking the current name of the country, not the past name. Right? What is the name of the... Before... Can I no, take... Before. Uh, this was before. Yes. We... No. <laughs> no, some guy. I gotta figure this one out myself. Um, I gotta figure this one out. Oh, I got four right so far. What was the name of the African People's Republic before the first elected black government changed the country's name? Okay, what was the name before they changed the name? Okay, I read it. Okay, I had to read it. 
What was the name before they changed the name? Okay, okay, okay. So it's either Zaire, Rhodesia, or Mali. South Africa still exists. Mali still exists. Rhodesia and Zaire are either one. Now, I could have sworn Rhodesia became South Africa, but Asher Road to Zimbabwe. I thought Zaire became Congo. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick with Astro wrote because and blame it on Astro if he's wrong. Zai Rhodesia. I knew it! I was right! It was Zaire! <laughs> it was Zaire, damn it! This cosmopolitan, French-speaking city was the three-time capital of a country by the same name, which seceded from Canada in 1995, was re-annexed in 2011, seceded again in 2022, was reintegrated to Canada in 2026, and seceded for the last time in 2030. Jesus Christ, it's Quebec. <laughs> the infamous North American Boys, we have the meat. The infamous North American ozone hole appeared some four years after it was predicted by a group of prominent scientists. It became a serious campaign issue during the US election year. Uh, I would imagine because this is a 92 game, it became 90. It was 88. Shit. Who was the last leader of the defunct Soviet Union Socialist Republics? Uh, it was Boris Yeltsin. No, it was Mikhail Gorbachev. Dinosaurs Part 2. This region of the world became increasingly important to industrialized nations between 1945 and 2020, and then suddenly reverted to third world backwater status in less than five years. Hint, it became dinosaurs because they, because they ran out of them. The Middle East. They're talking about the Middle East because <laughs> I think they are. Yeah. Offbeat historical facts. The United Kingdom went to war with what South American country during the early 1980s? Argentina. The Falcons. Uh, the Falklands. Uh, that's four. You answered eight out of tens. I beat him. I beat his ass! Newbar says, Congratulations, new fish! He hands over the medallion, then grins as he pulls another one out of his pocket. Got hundreds of these things, he says wickedly. The corp goons never took him away because they think they're worthless. He hangs a medallion around his neck. He hang. Uh, perhaps I'll see you again, my friend. Newbar disappears. Your score just went up by 15. Nice. Score? You've achieved a score of 67 out of 1600 in 199 turns. You have an account balance of $1,450. You are authorized for flight crew status. Um, nobody talks about that anymore. I think it came up in the, in the uh, news again because Argentina will always bring up its status and say that, you know. But uh, especially now that Brexit is a thing and stuff, I think it's become a thing again. Um, but GG's, y'all. Um, what is the definition of is? What? I did not have sexual relations with that woman. It's interesting how some of the quotes just stick out better than others. <laughs> Oh, you're referring to the ozone hole. Nobody cares anymore. But that's because the ozone hole kind of re like reformed, I believe. If I think, I don't know. I heard something about it reforming, um, because they kind of they banned a lot of the aerosols that were causing it. The last time Top Gear went to the cunt, Argentina got chased out. Yes, they did. All right. So, we got it. So, let's save. One... Dalian. I don't think I spelled that right. 
China still using CFCs? Let's see, we got blackjack table. <laughs> I got time till she shows up. There are many ways to look at this game. Oh, Jesus Christ. Play blackjack. I play blackjack and then lose $6. Are you kidding me? I can't even... I lose 10. Oh, no. Where did you get that robot? I built him. Oh, no. Like it? It's crap, son. C. Doc Gamble. I don't like this game. What is this bullshit, man? What is this? Can you not it's ever crap, win a hand? Son. I won 12. I don't like this game. <laughs> All right. Play roulette. I lose 28. This is stupid. I I don't think you're supposed to win any at all ever. For God's sake, this is terrible. I thought I figured it out. <laughs> I thought I figured the strat. <laughs> I was like, wait, why am I winning? Oh man, I lost it all. Wow. three <laughs> is there any game where doc can't gamble look i thought it was gonna i honestly thought it was gonna be like a thing where you can actually manipulate it. i thought that'd been cool no you can't well i want to see if i can win the first roll and then quit Does the game keep track of money or do you effectively have unlimited money? You have you have a you have a finite amount. You have $1,450. I had bought some drinks earlier. I have $1,450. Can we undo and play? I don't know. Let's try that. Oh. It would probably give you a message you can't do that. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, you know what I should have done? Let me restore that. It, it did undo with the time, but I want to see if it undo the money loss. Okay, status. Blackjack. I lost four dollars. Oh wait. The status take time. No. B 
think I don't know if undo did something because the time didn't go backwards. So yeah, I think it did. So let's restore that. So it leads me to believe it's not time based. So okay, so. Yes, you can undo your money as long as it's like immediately. So status, I'm sorry, undo is just undo turn. Yeah, as opposed to time-based. Okay, cool. If only could do that in real life. <laughs> I just want to win the first hand. Let me win the first hand. Come on. Come on. Come on. Why won't it let me win? <laughs> I just want to win the first hand and leave. <sighs> this game is like, seriously? A dollar. Ugh. No, I lost 16. I win! I beat the house! Let's leave! Oh god, let's get out of here! We're leaving! We're out! Woof! Two dollars? It's two dollars more than I had before. Okay. <laughs> um, now let's wait till ten o'clock. Let's save. I beat the house. I beat the odds! Okay. Um, wait until 22.00. Wait. Time passes. An attractive blonde woman makes her way over to the bar and sits down in a complete in an empty seat next to you. She is wearing a corporation uniform and looks sleek, confident, and is used to getting her way. She orders a drink and turns to look at you, tossing back her hair in a practice motion. Do I know you? You look familiar. Suddenly recognition dawns in her eyes, qu followed quickly by a look of disinterest. Oh, I know where you saw your face. Your file. You're one of my new fish. I'm Terry Nielsen. Deputy Director, Exploration Program Section. You found it, Punch Dex Organic to Synthetic, nice. It's a good song. Oh, there she is. I thought that was her hair on the side. That's her, that's her, uh, badge. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, buy her a drink. She's looking at me. Look at Terry. Terry Nielsen looks sexy, tough, and highly intelligent. A powerful combination that gives her an intimidating presence. She's wearing a corporation uniform. Welcome to Gateway, Terry says somewhat distantly. I hope that your decision to become a prospector pays off for you. If there's anything that the corporation can do for you, let me know. Good luck on your prospecting missions. Give memo to Terry. Terry takes the memo and glances at it. She looks sharply at you, her earlier lack of interest gone completely. 
Her eyes turn suddenly to ice, and you shiver as she seems to stare right into you. It's as if she's making some kind of final judgment about you on the spot. You try not to fidget. Finally, after a long silence, some warm cre warmth creeps back into her face. The corners of her mouth pull slightly upward. So, new fish, you are interested in the Orion program. Your score has gone up by five. The famous robotic bartender trundles over to where you're standing. It raises her right eyebrow. Oh wait, it extends a tray bearing a full glass. Terry raises her right eyebrow and reaches over to pick up her drink. She studies the glass, smiles, and take, takes a sip. Oh no, she's cute. <laughs> she looks like a friend of yours. Hey, Galatep. That is a good song. I remember that song. That's a good song. Alright, um, talk to Terry. Mm-hmm. The Orion Program, otherwise known as the Orion Special Exploration Initiative, is one of the most promising research efforts currently underway in this station. An exclusive group of limited partners has been given a chance to work with the Corporation Science Section to exploit the first real breakthrough in understanding the heat ship guidance systems. The robotic bartender terminals away. Look at drink. There's nothing unusual about the other drink. I have sponsored over 25 prospectors for participation in the Orion program since I was promoted to deputy director. To give you some idea of how few that is, consider this. I've been responsible for more than 300 prospectors at one time or another over the last two years. Alright. Terry shakes her head. I don't know, new fish. I look at you and I don't have much to go on. If you want to join the team, you're going to have to do something pretty damn special. I'll tell you what my criteria for sponsoring the last few Orion prospectors. At least two completed missions and one completely, and one completely unique, wait. Uh, the last criteria for the last, sponsoring the last few prospectors. At least two new completed missions and one completely unique discovery. What that means for you, new fish, is two trips out and an entry in your data main logbook that shows you brought back something that nobody else has found. That's a pretty tall order. Now I'm going to break a corporation regulation and give you my direct PV number. Uh, what's your number? Terry Nielsen doesn't have a number. <laughs> doesn't have the number. Terry writes a napkin on a cocktail napkin and hands it to you. A number of years ago, I used to be a prospector, much like you. Then the corporation recruited me to be a transport pilot. I made the Earth L5 run. Then I ferried supplies to and from Gateway, Venus, and two Delta stations in orbit around Mercury. My score just went up by 10. Nice. Okay, so I got the number. I flew that. I flew the Rockwell MBB ra medium range shuttles that the corporation uses for most of its resupply missions. Those suckers are huge, 500 feet long, 100 feet in diameter, even bigger than the transport you came out on. The corporation pays well and promotes fast when they see results. I produce results. You'll have a future if you can produce results too. Remember, two completed missions and a legit Hichi find. Call me when you think you've earned a green badge. Terry smiles quickly. I need to get going. You're a lucky new fish. If I spent as much time with each of my prospectors as I did with you, I would never get anything done. So long, Terry gets up and walks away. 
So we had to do two complete missions and a legit Heechee fine. So, in order to go, I need my badge and I need a set of orders, don't I? Either way, we're done. We can go out. All right, we're out of the bar. We're going to save. All right, so let's go north. Let's go down. We're on level Tanya now. Um... So we've done uh, Tom, we did the classes, we saw the toaster. What is the napkin? Examine the napkin. Scrawled on the napkin is the number 4285, 42 83. Okay, so that's her number. back up uh, I want to use the com set no um, what is it Activate. Uh, what was the bulletin board again? What do the green badges know that we don't? Why do they consistently score better than the rest of us? Okay. We demand access. Show your support. Stage a protest outside the Orion briefings. So the briefings are at 900 hours, the briefings. Ah, okay. So the actual thing is not important, but where they have their briefings is at 0, 0,900 hours is. Oh, okay, okay. Let me rewrite this.
Are we able to eat a pill in this game? I tried kissing a lot of things. I tried, no. See, the thing is you can't really try a lot of things too much because this is timed. Each turn takes like a minute. So you don't want to be like goofing off too much. Um, well, mouse cursor stopped again. Oh, there we go. All right. Um, is it just me or does this track sound like something from Tomb Raider Future Shock? Uh, you'd have Fractal My Mike would be the best one to play tell you because he played it recently. I have not played that game yet. I'm pretty sure he's played that. Yeah, he's played Skynet and Future Shock. Yeah. Okay, so now we're in Tanya. Um, can I just go on a mission? So Tanya, the hangars would be to the south. Okay. So we're here. What's the um membership pin? It's a gaudy pin with a Pedroza club. What the hell's the Pe Pedroza club? Show blue badge to agent. The agent looks up at your identification. I'm sorry, but you're not listed in the computer yet. Please try back tomorrow. Also, I have to go to sleep. I assume. Talk to agent. Badge, please. Okay. Room T52. This is where they have the, um, the Orion briefings. Bitterman played it? Oh yeah, he did, he did. There's the barracks. I mean, the armory, I'm sorry. Um, we'll go up. What time is it? It's already 10. I don't think there's anything else to do. Well, there might be. Um, examine medallion. The medallion is circular, a disc about two millimeters thick and 10 centimeters in diameter. It is made of silver or steel. When you move your head, you can see a strange swirl of colors, almost like a soap bubble, flow along the surface of the disc. The phenomenon appears disappears when you stop moving relative to the disc. The graphics are pretty good. Place medallion on he, she. You insert the disc into the depression. As it drops into place, the device begins to hum and the air above the disc shimmers. Your score just went up by five. Whoops, look at device. The strange looking device is about the size and shape of a toaster oven. An opening on one side reveals mirrored interior surfaces. On top of the device is a circular depression about 10 centimeters across. You see a metal disc, okay. Um, what do I do with that? If I pick up the tuning fork, I'll get an alarm. Okay.
There doesn't seem to be a suitable place to put the tuning fork with the middle disc. Place fork on uh pedestal. Okay. Take disc. As you remove the disc from the depression, this device sees its humming and the shimmering and the air vanishes. Place disc on device. You insert the disc into the depression. As it drops into place, the device begins to hum and the air above the disc shimmers. Look at disc. When you move your head, you can see a strange swirl of colors, almost like a soap, a soap bubble. Okay, so you don't see anything new when you place it on the device with the disc itself. Okay. Um, take device. Read plaque. This pedestal contains one of three similar artifacts of unknown function discovered in 2096 during a mission to the Hod El Garbi system by Alec Brockna, a Mauritius Mauritanian Mer prospector. All right. Uh, place plaque. No. Device on stand. All right, take disc. Examine disc. Oh, place device on the place disc on device. Touch disc. Okay, touch device. Take disc. Place disc on fork. Hit fork with disc. You strike the tuning fork against the metal disc. It produces an eerie humming tone. Place disc on device. Turn on device. Look at device. <laughs> um, an opening on one side reveals mirrored interior surfaces. Look at opening. All right. Well, it's almost 1130. It's almost 1030 here. Um, let's save. For sleeping, first night, first day. All right, sleep in bed, lie down, sleep. I'm not sleepy. It's right up there on the status line. <laughs> nice. Wait until. Zero, 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 zero. Sleep. Get up. Okay. 
go down. It's, it's technically the next day. So. No badge to agent. Damn it. Wait until zero nine. Oh, restore. Um, lie in bed. Wait until zero. Sleep. You curl up on your bed and fall asleep. You wake several hours later. Okay. Um, take data man. So next day. Oh God, okay. So take pin. Take magazine. Take napkin. Take debit card. Look, shit. <laughs> Take disc. All right. Let's go. Let's see if I can go down now. Give badge to agent. You show your badge to the agent. She nods and escorts you through the gate into the hangar area. She stops near a computer terminal on the wall and studies the display. Found a prep ship for you, she says to you after the moment. I'll walk you over. Help you program your parasitic computer with your assigned codes and you're on your way. She begins walking away and you follow her into the west hangar base. You follow the agent past several large ships tucked into their berths in the hangar spaces. Men and equipment bustle around you. Uh, working on the Heechee ships. The agent finally steps in front of one one of the ships and gestures grandly. This is it. Now give me your badge and I'll program the onboard computer. You hand her your badge and she clambers aboard the ship. Just a few minutes later she reappears. Okay, sport. Just press the code button and you'll see the codes that the corporation has assigned to you. You're set to go. I'll leave you to it. Good luck and good hunting. She returns your badge and walks away. You are left alone in the dock. Here we are. The ship hangars are partitioned into hundreds of individual docks. This is a home, one of the docks, a berth that serves as home for a Heechee starship. The ship itself towers over your head, a collection of angular and curved lines that is both awkwardly, awkward and strangely graceful at the same time. The ship is perched on long landing gear struts. A ladder leads up into the hatch. The dock exit is to the north. Oh my goodness. We're about to go into space. I'm excited. I feel like I should restore and try and see if there's anything else I missed. But I kind of want to just kind of warp myself and see what happens. You go in the ship and stuff. So, um... Look at ship. Your ship is standing at its dock in the hangar bay. The strange craft is about 50 meters tall from the tip of its bulbous nose uh, to the circular pads on the end of its landing gear struts. It is vaguely mushroom shaped. A large bullet like cabin module sits atop a cluster of chemical rocket thrusters. An examination of the exterior reveals several next dents and abrasions from long years of service. The octag octagonal cabin hatch in the belly of the ship is open. Read sign. A large exit sign is to the north. Okay. Climb. Look at ladder. There seems to be a verb. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Look at ladder. The ladder leads up into the ship through the hatch. Climb. Ladder. Look at that! That's so beautiful! There is barely enough room for you to move inside the cabin, which was clearly not designed for humans. 
Uh, you see an open hatch on the floor, a seat, and the ship control panel. There is a Heechee transmit, transit coil beside the panel. Various other pieces of equipment cover the walls of the cabin. You see a spacesuit here. Look at spacesuit. Your protective gear consists of a metallic silver suit and a large helmet with cl a clear faceplate. Wear spacesuit. Taking the spacesuit first, you put on the spacesuit. Sit. Look at screen. Display screen. The ship the ship's video display is about a foot square and is covered with all sorts of letters and symbols. So we got cabin hatch, cabin seat, coil. Look at coil. The co that the coil is inexplicably the, the coil that inexplicably changes color during space travel is currently blue. Look at cabin hatch. The octagonal cabin hatch is open. Close hatch. You close the ship's hatch and the cabin is repressurized from the onboard air tanks. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. Take coil? You can't take the coil. Look at control panel. Mounted in front of the seat is a blue control panel. On the panel, you see silver buttons and a small man-made video display unit. It's, she did say type in code. Okay. Uh, code? Deal, go, orbit, return, land. View, inside gateway hangar, info, docking gateway hangar. So it looks like the first code is there, go. I'm on a space adventure. A sullen red giant dominates the view screen when you return to normal space. This is a dying star in a dead planetary system. The remnants of six worlds are either baked to cinders or blasted into jagged pieces. You realize there's nothing to be found here in Return to Gateway. Okay, so that first place was a dead end. Your score went up by 25. Your spacesuit is clean and restowed in the ship. You return to the hangar entrance. <laughs> what? I want to go back. It's already 8. Fuck, we got to keep going. Gives up kind of easily. Yeah. Red giant. Okay. You know what? We'll resume this next time. We'll resume this next time. There's a lot to cover here. We'll resume this next time. There's a lot to cover here. So exit. We saved, right? Um, before sleep. Yeah. Take the full day. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm really, I'm really, really liking this game. I'm really liking it. I, I, I can't wait to see more of it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited, excited, excited I am. But yeah, it's getting late for me. But I think that was, that was a good first uh, stream of Gateway. I was kind of intimidated by playing this game. I didn't know what to expect because so many more this interface is so different. There's so much more to like use, but I seem to be stumbling my way around. It seems to be making some good progress. All right, cool, cool, cool. You have no hints? That's good to know because um, this actually comes with a hint book. <laughs> I can use that if I get stuck, if I truly get stuck, but that hasn't happened yet. 
Um, let's pause the timer. Where are you? Four hours. Four hours, two minutes, and seven seconds. I think a good start for today. A good first day. Um, but because I missed, I moved, uh, this was supposed to be played tomorrow, but I moved it, so... Um, Monday will be something new. But look at that lineup! Monday will be something new. Diablo 2 on Wednesday. Battlefield Bad Company on Friday. I'm hoping to finish that on Friday, so we're going to play something else. Uh, the Hardcore Run continues in Diablo 2. And on Monday, Sunday, uh, 5 p.m. next Sunday, Part 2 of Frederick Pulls Gateway. Monday, we'll be back at 7.30 p.m. with a new game. Um, but yeah, also, uh, I, I decided, like, Sunday... I Wildcard Sunday, would I usually used to use like with replay of old games uh, but I've decided you know what I could play that whenever so Sunday will just be Sundays <laughs> and uh, uh, weekdays will be weekdays and I could probably play whatever I want whenever. Um, but yeah Monday will be a new game uh, and we'll see what that is and yeah I hope you enjoyed today's stream everyone I hope you enjoyed it um, it was fun for me uh, where is the thing with Bob there it is. Uh, but before we call it a night, big thank you, Rev Brand. Thank you so much for the 100 bits and the gifting a sub to anyone that got a gift sub. Please enjoy the emotes. I hope you like them. And for the tier two resub, thank you, thank you. Cosmic Void, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Country Snacker, thank you for the raid. And Sill, thank you so much for the uh, 35 month resub. Uh, much appreciated. And Zachary Hudden, thank you so much for the 70 bits. Tony, gifting a sub. Uh, as well and for the raid thank you so much jumi thank you so much for the 31 month, month resub thank you i'll be back tomorrow with a new game hopefully it's a good one because i don't know what it is <laughs> um let's uh let's get someone a raid and oh my god Shock Picard is shocked. Ambrosian with the thousand bits right at the end. Thank you so much, Ambrosian. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll be back uh, with a new game. I just got to figure that out. I will figure out a game on Monday, which is in a few hours. I'll figure it out. It'll be fine. What's the worry? Who's worried? I'm not worried. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I totally didn't move Sunday's game, Monday's game to today because I couldn't figure out what to play. Totally. Totally not what happened. Um, <laughs> let's give someone a raid. Let's see who's playing something. Um, I totally didn't panic. I Yes, I have not played an RTS in a while. <laughs> I have not. Um, good Sunday game, eh? I'm glad you enjoyed it, Rev. Anyone on my friends list playing something? Not friends list, follow list. Um, Camilio is playing Homeworld. That's an RTS. Camilo has been playing for five hours though. I don't know if he's finishing soon, but he's playing the original. Um, let's give him a raid. It's been a while since we've seen Camilio. He's playing Homeworld. The original Homeworld. That is not who it is. Nope, that's not Camilio. It's someone playing Modern Warfare. Camilio. Since, uh, since, uh, Galata brought it up, it just so happened he's playing Homeworld. The original. Not remaster. He's playing the original. The good one. Um. Yeah. So we'll say hi. Um, he's playing the original Homeworld from 1999. So let's say hi to him. And I hope you all had a wonderful stream. Thanks again, everyone. Hopefully I'll catch you again for Monday's game, which will be new. But until then... Uh, have a great night. Have a great morning. Please stay safe. And I will see you all next time. Bye.